All right. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for attending this uh, first webinar of um, Radio Engineering Circle, which uh, this is uh, a series of webinar that will come along in the next couple of uh, weekends. So we selected Saturday to be the best time for everyone to participate and be able to learn via online classes like this one. So this will run starting this Saturday until June and uh, a lot of uh, wonderful topics uh, that will be presented by different distinguished guests and speakers uh, across depending on their expertise. Now also I wish to welcome everyone. We are also amazed that uh, there, it gained traction and a lot of uh, participants subscribed not only in the Philippines but also uh, across uh, the Gulf region. So, by the way, we have uh, international participants also that had subscribed into this webinar. So I welcome you all, and uh, I wish also to thank the other supporting organization. So this uh, webinar series is in collaboration with the uh, Philippine Amateur Radio Association, the PARA group, where our uh, Radio Engineering Circle is uh, part of uh, the member of uh, this uh, prestigious organization. And likewise, it is being supported by the Philippine Technological Council, Young Engineer Section, and the Rapid Emergency Telecom Team uh, Philippines, that's the Rep PH. So uh, we're gonna hear a lot of uh, wonderful discussions that will be presented by the distinguished speakers from across uh, on their topics assigned. And I hope that uh, you'd be able to learn something from this session and be able to encourage also those who are not yet member of the amateur radio uh, to be able to become member uh, of the organization or whichever organization nearby your community where you belong. But nonetheless, the key intention of this one is to help you uh, be able to attain a certain level of uh, competency and capability in uh, your preparation to become a radio amateur, amateur radio hobbyist, and at the same time, an expert in the future. So I wish to welcome and thank you for attending uh, in advance this webinar. I hope you complete all the five speakers and be able to ask questions at the end of this webinar. And you'll be given e certificate uh, after a few weeks as a that will signify that uh, you were able to complete this webinar series. So, thank you and welcome to the first webinar series of Radio Engineering Circle titled Fundamentals of Amateur Radio and Preparation to NTC Amateur Radio Class C Examination. Uh, thank you, DB1PTC, for welcoming everyone. Now, I hope everyone is having a good time today. And we just want to welcome again everyone, and also not just in the Philippines, but internationally, who are joining this webinar. And now, uh, without further ado, let's start our first topic, which is element two, the radio laws and reg regulations. Please welcome Leo Almazan or uh, Delta Uniform 3 Zulu X-Ray, Paris Chief Finance Officer. Hello, uh, good afternoon to uh, everyone. Uh, thanks, Mikey, for um, the introduction. Um, I guess, uh, what do you call that? Uh, we're having technical difficulties, but again, that's amateur radio. Hi, hi. Uh, ano ko lang dito is uh, for those uh, who are um, contemplating on uh, getting their exam. Um, there's um, three uh, for class C uh, different elements. And uh, the first one is uh, element two, which is rules and regs, which is uh, uh, the easiest of all the three exam. And then there is the technical exam, element three. And uh, it's just um, a matter of uh, getting used to the a question and answer in, 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 in solving the technical questions because you have to be a little bit uh, uh, technically inclined 
to uh, answer them on 100%. But then again, uh, I think the passing passing is only 70. So, um, pang chance. Uh, the, the last one is element uh, four, which is, I believe, the hardest of all three. Uh, kasi yung, uh, uh, let's put it this way, madaming bumabagsa sa element four. So um, I will try my best to uh, go through uh, uh, the Q&A session of uh, element four. And hopefully um, uh, I will put uh, more emphasis on um, some of the questions that needs to be uh, understood by the exam taker. So again, uh, I'm Leo Almazan, uh, DU3 Zulu X-Ray. My home call sign in the US is WA6LOS. And um, I am looking forward to um, uh, giving you uh, element four in a little while. Uh, I've been an amateur radio since I was 12 years old, by the way. So uh, with that, I'll say, uh, uh, good luck and, and see you guys in a little while. Thank you. Okay, so uh, our uh, topic for this morning is about the introduction to amateur radio. This is uh, only uh, 10 minutes. Uh, short discussion we about uh, introduction to amateur radio. So, si uh, hindi ko alam si kung uh, marami na rito na dati ng mga radio. So, or mas marami yung uh, hindi yung uh, o oh, yung bago lang sa hobby. No? Kasi mostly tawag natin dito sa radio ay eh, uh, walkie-talkie. <laughs> so, so uh, in the Philippines, we have some personalities in the field of amateur radio. No? So, ayan, malino na ba ako? Very clear? Okay, 5-9 sa Katanduanes. Okay, so I repeat, so we have uh, some personalities in the field of amateur radio in the Philippines. So number one, my uh, uh, on the presentation is uh, D1 Juliet Mike Gold, no? Si Jose Marie Gonzalez, and uh, however, he's already silent key or uh, yeah. So silent key na siya, meaning. Uh, Matay na siya, I think, 2018. 2018? So he's a former uh, congressman of uh, San Juan City. So naging art, uh, he's also a former artist and of course, a former president of the Philippine Amateur Radio Association. Number two is uh, Tirso Cruz the third. So his call sign is Delta Uniform One Papa Inja Papa. So he's an, also an artist, uh, but now uh, he's not uh, already active in the AM radio. So his call sign is D1 PIP. The next is uh, the Senate President of the Republic of the Philippines, the DU1 Victor Sierra Tango, the Senator Vicente Tito Soto III. No, the, the, their former group is uh, HRP or the Ham Radio Philippines Incorporated, uh, including his uh, brother, uh, Mark Big, Big Soto, the artist, comedian, host, is uh, also a uh, former ham radio enthusiast or operator. His call sign is uh, Delta Uniform 1, Mike Zulu. So, so then lastly is uh, retired police major general and uh, very active in the field of amateur radio. He's also uh, the exer, uh, retired major general Ramon Chen Ruganan. His call sign is Delta Uniform One Charlie Hotel November. So these are the some uh, personalities in the ham radio. 
in the Philippines. So let's go uh, to our topic, Introduction to Amateur Radio. So why the seminar? So under the law, uh, mandated by law prior uh, allowing individuals to take the amateur radio examination. So the reference is on the NTC Memorandum Circular 6-7-97. And of course, uh, to clearly understand the, what amateur radio is all about. So why we conducted the uh, ham radio orientation seminar. By the way, my name is Lawrence Atanasio. The call sign is 4 Fox Strat 1, Share of Victor Yankee. That is my name and the current uh, District 1 manager of the District 1, Opara. Thank you. So amateur radio, also known as uh, ham radio. So the use first appeared in the United States during the opening decade of the 20th century, for example, in 1909, Robert A. Morton reported overhearing an amateur radio transmission, which included the comments, say, do you know the fellow who is putting up a new station out your way? I think he is a ham. Hmm? Then uh, started with Guglielmo Marconi, who discovered that the messages could be transmitted through wireless means. No, no more uh, internet uh, transmitted through wireless communication. So in the Philippines, this was introduced by the Americans. Then, uh, next. So amateur radio is a non visionary hobby, or meaning not to be used for uh, business purposes. Oh, so, uh, from Italian word amatore, which means for the love of, or the for the love of hobby. So, amatore is a Greek word. Then hams are friendly persons who love to teach and uh, disseminate the hobby to friends and young people without uh, payment. Like us, uh, uh, we we talk in uh, uh, different um, ham radio seminars. We are not paid by the uh, by the host uh, by the host. So we are all uh, volunteer here. So to teach, uh, especially our the newbie would like to join the ham radio hobby. Okay, the amateur radio activities, for example, is uh, DXing or uh, awards hunting. So DX, DX means uh, distance communications and with the right equipment, worldwide communication on the HF band. So uh, 10 through 160 meters is a regular possibility. Many DXers like contact station on the rear island and countries which aren't frequently present on the airwaves. This is sometimes called uh, chasing DX. So you've seen in the picture this, uh, DX0K or the Kalayan Spratly Island. Oh, so last, uh, uh, the DX, uh, I forgot the <laughs> call sign. So I think 2017 or six, uh, the uh, Spratly Island, uh, the expedition. So operated oh. by uh, Filipino hams. Then uh, last year, uh, July, we operated in uh, the Port Drum. Port Drum in uh, Ternat, the Port Drum in Mar uh, Ternate, Cavite. Then uh, uh, under the marine base of the Philippine uh, Marines. So we go to uh, the marine base to have a DX. DX.
Okay, the other activities is emergency and other volunteer services. For example, uh, floods, landslide, earthquakes, hurricanes, you know, accidents, railroad, etc. Uh, whenever regular communication fails, hams are ready to use their uh, radios to provide emergency communication services to their communities. So this is one of the biggest help of the amateur radio operators rendering uh, emergency communication services. Like the picture on the slide, the man with the cup with the red bandana is uh, DU5 Alpha Oscar Kilo. So he's rendering the emergency communication services during the Takloban uh, disaster. So he's, he's the only ham operator transmitting messages here in uh, Manila. And uh, on the, um, the other picture is the uh, some uh, rec members with uh, I think is that in the NDRMC together with the uh, RET. So next. So text, uh, technical experimenting in uh, kit building. So amateur radio operators came from uh, they come from all walks of life, ranging from technicians, then uh, okay, technicians to engineers, teachers to scientists and students to retirees. For many of them, the attraction to the hub is to build their own equipment, whether it's just a simple antenna, something as uh, complex as a transmitter or an interference between radio and a computer. So that's why we have a topic on the amateur radio practice. Oh, this is one of the uh, very exciting activity of the ham radio. The, uh, experimenting no? uh, we uh, by learning uh, uh, learning by doing so we can uh, create our own antenna or uh, uh, maybe a radio itself then we have also a contesting no contesting is often called the radio sport Almost every weekend, there is some form of amateur radio contest. Amateur radio operators uh, get on the air and compete to see who can make the most contacts in a limited period of time. For example, is the uh, CQ Worldwide uh, WPX SSB contest. And last, the, last May, pretty first week, the uh, CQWPX uh, CW contest or the Morse code. So many more contests in the ham radio uh, uh, hobby. Uh, in the Philippines, we have the uh, BHF roundup contest, the activity of the Girl Scouts of the Philippines, the International Friendship Exchange and DX contest to be held uh, annually uh, uh, during uh, third Saturday of the month of February. But uh, due to COVID-19 pandemic, the said contest or the infects in the X contest is uh, uh, postponed. So this is one of the exciting activity of the amateur radio, the contesting. Okay, so amateur radio activities can also talk no, with the astronauts. Yes, it is really possible space stations to have amateur radio equipment and license amateur radio astronauts often to take time to make contacts with amateurs on Earth. HAMS also can use satellites as repeaters in the sky to make contacts with other Earth stations over uh, great distances. So this is the sample uh, pictures. So in the Philippines, we have the 
diwata diwata tu so uh, so uh, ham radio satellite operators in the Philippines is very active no from district 1 to district 9 so but the uh, sometimes we have the uh, QRM so that's why we, uh, we that's why they interrupt the uh, operations of the satellite so hopefully the this uh, matter will be uh, uh, okay without the QRM or the interference. So this is uh, yeah, amateur radio satellite activity. Okay, digital communication. So connect computer to your radio and install some software and you can be communicating digitally over the air. Some of the digital modes can be more effective in marginal transmissions condition and some even support error pre-transmission using methods of forward uh, error correction. For example, of the uh, digital communications is the Yaisu C4FM, no? the, the ICOM, the D-STAR, the, uh, we have also the DMR, uh, CA4FM and uh, DMR is more is uh, popular here in the Philippines. So we have a friends in the uh, America, in the uh, Canada. We can talk uh, uh, over through uh, handheld radio. Now we uh, then are connected by uh, digital communication. So that, but the, the digital communication needs uh, internet connection. So to connect the uh, the both transmission. Okay, we have also the SSTV or the slow scan television. So using our personal computer with specialized software, you can send pictures around the world. Or uh, maybe the, this will be transmitted uh, on air. So you can download your uh, application by a cell phone. Then uh, put your cell phone on the your radio and uh, the, the pictures or the uh, example the, on the slide, we, they will uh, uh, connect it by a uh, by a uh, by a radio okay so okay by a radio no so they will receive the picture and uh, receive through your uh, cell phone the uh, pictures for example the 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 satellite communications. Okay, so satellite communications, amateur radio satellites use specially allocated frequencies to facilitate communication between amateur radio stations. So these satellites can be used for free by licensed amateur radio operators for voice and data communications. Currently, satellites in orbit acts as a repeaters, linear response transponders or store and forward digital relays so this is the uh, sample uh, pictures so our uh, Tiwata uh, satellite repeater the his call sign is uh, Delta Whiskey 4 Tango Alpha so uh, Tiwata if you read so Delta Whiskey 4 Tango Alpha the call sign of uh, Tiwata Okay, so we have the, the Morse code or the continuous wave, CW. Morse code is the uh, original data mode. So it's a method of transmitting text as a series of off or on off tones that can be directly understood by skilled listeners. 
the uh, code consists of sequences of short and long signals called bits and dots, which represent all 26 common letters as well as numbers, uh, punctuations, and cosines. Many considered it to be the language of amateur radio. No? The Morse code is a uh, very uh, very exciting uh, activities or uh, uh, of the ham radio operators. So you can send uh, your message by uh, sounds. Mm -hmm. the, the, so the, if, you remind, uh, if you remember, our Siemens used the, uh, the Morse code. No? If uh, there's no uh, signal so on the radio, they can use uh, CW or the continuous wave. Uh, we can use uh, by a uh, flashlight. No? So, so that is the Morse code or the continuous wave. So uh, that is uh, uh, Samuel Morse, the name of the uh, and the uh, CW or the Morse code. Okay, so thank you very much. So this is a uh, 4F1. Sierra Victor Yankee. Uh, thank you and the uh, 73. Okay, so good uh, good morning everyone. This is uh this is John De La Cruz for Fox Rat One Juliet Juliet and since we are already introduced of what amateur radio is, let's now discuss more of the rules and regulations so we'll discuss more of the policies so uh the amateur radio is actually uh, uh being a, a part of the radio control law or the act number 846 so if you will see this was approved in november 1931 and it was the oldest uh, law in the in radio communication and it was amended further by the uh, two Commonwealth Acts, uh, CA 365 and CA 571, and further uh, amended by, by the Republic Act number 584, which was approved in 1950. So all uh, uh, all all laws rela related to the communication are be, uh, is based on the Act number 3846. Also. Uh, some of the amateur radio regulations are uh, based on the Ministry Circular Number 87-174, uh, which was issued in uh, 19, uh, 1987. Also, we have the Memorandum Circular Number 020387, which is the implementation of the revised amateur regulation, and Memorandum Circular Number 030821012. These are all issued by the National Telecommunications Commission. Okay, by the way, what is National Telecommunications Commission? Uh, NTC is the uh, sole body that exercises jurisdiction over the supervision, adjudication, and control over all telecommunication services. Uh, this is also the government agency that grants permit for the use of radio frequencies for wireless telephone and telegraph systems and radio communication systems. So they are the one who issues or uh, they're the one who is in charge of uh, monitoring and controlling and supervising everything related to telecommunications, which includes the amateur radio. So NT, uh, NTC is more of the national. And in, in terms of the international, we have the International Telecommunication Union or the ITU. So it's a specialized agency of the United Nations, and it is concede, uh, it is responsible for issues that concern information and communication technologies. So just to take note, Philippines is under the ITU Region Three. Yan. So please remember that. Uh, lumabas sa exam. Okay. So let's have some basic definition of terms. So we have, okay, so let's first define amateur radio communication. It's the telecommunication by means of radio waves. Take note of the highlighted phrases. So it's conducted by or among duly 
authorized amateur on a non-commercial basis. So, bawal magbenta sa amateur radio. Next is amateur radio service. It's a, a radio communication service for the purpose of self-training, intercommunication, and technical investigations carried out by amateur. Then we also have the amateur satellite service. So it uses space stations on Earth satellite. So if we are familiar with the uh, Diwata, so it has a it has an amateur satellite payload. So we use that for long distance communication. Also, we have this amateur radio station license. So it's a written authority. So if you're going to op operate or if you're going to use an amateur radio, so you should have this license or we call it as the RSL. So it is issued to a qualified person who passed an amateur examination for the period specified. Then we have, okay, by the way, we have uh, four, uh, actually three types of stations. So we have the fixed station, as you can see, it is installed at a specified and fixed location. So ito yung mga nakalagay sa bahay or kung saan mang uh, specific place na uh, nandun lang talaga yung mga radio or yung mga equipments na ginagamit sa amateur radio. So ang tawag natin dun ay fixed station. Then we also have the mobile station. So these are radio station installed on board a vehicle or vessel. So pwede ka pala maglagay ng mobile radio sa sasakyan or kahit anong vessel. Pero typically, nasa sasakyan. Okay? Then we also have the portable station. Yan. You pwede dalhin kahit saan. So those are the portable stations. So it can be moved from one place to another or personally carried. Then we also have the repeater station. So the repeater station is the one that receives a signal on a frequency and automatically retransmit the same signal on another frequency. So repeater station is used to increase the coverage. Lalo na kapag may mga amateur radio club na malaki yung sakop nila na area, na geographical area. And also, para makakonect din sa ibang stations outside their vicinity. Like for example, if you're from Manila, if you have a repeater station, pwede kang makapag-transmit papunta sa mas malayang lugar like Pampanga or Tarlac or even as far as Tugigaraw. Depende sa configuration ng repeater station. So, tawag naman sa atin sa mga uh, interested sa amateur radio ay mga Amateur Radio Operator or HAM. So it's solely with a personal aim to operate an amateur station without any business interest. Okay? So yan yung mga, mga uh, HAM. Okay? Then we also have this trustee. Mamaya di-discuss natin ito pagdating sa establishment ng club. So an amateur radio class A license for at least five years. Okay? And the club station license. So, yan yung issue sa isang club. Okay. Checkpoint number one. Check natin kung may mga kasagot. Blank is the term for any transmission, emission, and reception of signs, writings, images, and sounds or intelligence of any nature by wire, radio, optical, or other electromagnetic systems. A. Telecommunication. B. Broadcast. C. Radio experimentation. And D. Propagation. Ano kaya yung sagot? Okay, very good. Letter A, telecommunication. So, ngayon nakita mga sumasagot sa chat. Ayan, that's correct. Okay, checkpoint number two. What is the government agency which grants permits for the use of radio frequency? So, nandun na yung term. Government agency. So, ano kaya dyan? May sumagot ng letter B. Okay, hindi po B ha. It's letter D. National Telecommunications Commission. Okay, so moving on. So we have the different classes. So we have the class A, class B, class C, and class D. 
So, we start with class D. Class D is the foundation class. And class C is the technician class, while class B is general class and class A is extra class. Why do we have to segregate it into classes? Kasi each amateur class has its own privileges. So, tandaan nyo to ha, yung tawag sa kanila. Pag sinabing technician class, class C yun. Sinabing extra class, class A. Pag foundation class, class D. Okay? So, by the way, ito yung mga frequency band allocations. So, typically, di natin sinasabi na frequency range. Minsan, sinasabi natin uh, yung band. So, kunwari, sinabi, o oh, mag-transmit tayo sa 2 meter band. So, the 2 meter band is between 144 to 146 megahertz. And let's say, if we're going to transmit in the 40 meter band, so that's between 7 to 7.3 megahertz. So, sino nag-allocate or sino nag-issue ng allocation na to? It's the National Telecommunications Commission. So, ano ba yung typically na ginagamit natin sa amateur? So, we have the 40 meter band which is in the HF that's between 7 to 7.3 megahertz. Then, we have the 15 meter band which is also an HF from 21 to 21.45 megahertz. Then we also have the 2 meter band, which is the VHF. That's from 144 to 146 megahertz. 70 centimeter, that's UHF, from 420 to 450 megahertz. So that was based on the NTC memorandum circular. By the way, if you have any questions, so you can place it on the Q&A box. Okay. Ito na. Ito ba, ano ba yung mga authorized station power? So, we classify it in terms of HF, VHF, and UHF. So, sa class D, hindi ka pwede na HF. Tapos, VHF lang yung pwede. So, 50 watts for fixed station and 10 watts for mobile or portable station. Maximum yan lahat. Okay? Pag class C, pwede. Pwede na ng HF. Lalong pwede ng VHF and UHF. So, 100 watts pag continuous waves or yung Morse code or yung radio telegraph. Then, we have 200 watts on single sideband suppressed so carrier or yung voice. Then, we have for class B, syempre, mas mataas ngayon. Pwedeng 500 watts tsaka 1 kilowatt respectively on Morse code or in voice. Then, we have class A, pinakamataas. So, yan yung maximum. So, you can use HF, VHF, and UHF. Okay? Okay, checkpoint. Who is the Class A amateur jury appointed by the board to supervise and control the proper use? Okay, very good. It's the trustee. Yun yung kanina. Okay. Sige. How about technical regulation during emergency? Ito, medyo mahalaga rin to. So, we have this what we call the emergency channel that's bit, uh, located in 145 megahertz, more or less 25 kilohertz, and it shall be used for emergency communication and general calling frequency. So that's between the 144 to 146 megahertz. And the purpose of this is to facilitate the reception of distress calls. So all transmissions shall be kept to a, a minimum and shall not exceed one minute. So, bawal mag-transmit ng matagal. Okay? So, if without distress traffic, listen for a reasonable period before transmitting to ensure no distress traffic is taking. Okay. So, aside from that, meron pa tayong mga authorized radio frequencies at times of disaster national emergency. So, focus tayo sa amateur. So, sa amateur, sa HF, we have the 7.095 megahertz and for the VHF, we have the 144.74 megahertz. Though we have also the working frequency at 147.5 and 147.575 megahertz as the alternate. Sa Civic Action Group naman, 142.2 megahertz and 142 megahertz. Okay, ito. Uh, info lang. Baka, baka din lumabas sa exam. So, ano ba yung distress signal? Kapag voice, mayday. Spoken three times. Kapag radio telegraph naman, SOS. Madali yung tandaan yan kapag magmo-morse code na kayo yung SOS na yan. Okay? So, tandaan natin pag voice, may day, pag telegraph, SOS. Okay, so ngayon, 
So, may idea ka na kung anong na. Merong classes, merong uh, mga ano ba yung mga output na required. So, ngayon, may interesado ka na ngayon na maging amateur radio operator. So, ngayon, syempre, dapat regulated lahat. Kasi sabi nga ni NTC, dapat lahat nila regulate. So, ngayon, kailangan mo mag-take ng exam. So, minimum requirement is a Filipino citizen. So, or foreigner from a country providing the same privilege. Okay, take note natin ito mamaya. Okay, so as much as possible, kung dito sa Pilipinas, you are a Filipino citizen. Okay, though we have a ham operator na mga foreigner, especially here in the Philippines, they are a lot. So, also, if you are, uh, it should be at least 12 years old for class A, B, and C. So, as, as young as 12 years old, you can take the amateur radio exam. Pag class D, pwede 9 years old. Pero dapat may affidavit of parental consent and ability to transmit and receive images in English, Filipino, or any Philippine dialect, Spanish. Well, bihira na yung Spanish ngayon, pero Arabic, uh, especially in uh, Mindanao area, yes, we can transmit and receive messages as long as we are able to use it. Okay? So, Yan. By the way, kanina sabi, uh, ano daw, pwede yung foreigner mag-take in a country providing the same privilege to Filipinos. So, yun yung tinatawag natin na reciprocal agreement. So, it's an agreement of on li amateur licensing between two countries. Okay, for example, US and Philippines. So, yung mga, uh, so, mga taga-US, pwede silang gumamit dito. So, uh, using uh, as long as they are licensed in the US also Filipino pwede rin sa mag uh, pwede rin sa US so yun yung tinatawag na reciprocal agreement so pwede ka mag operate on both countries okay so ano ba yung mga coverage so yung exam natin walang exam sa class D as much as possible, we take the exam for the class C. So, ito yung mga uh, coverage. So, we have the element 2. Ito yun. We discuss the radio rules and regulation. Element 3, yung uh, fundamentals of electronics and electricity. And the element 4, which is the amateur radio practice. So, note, if a candidate for class C fails, in, syempre, ayaw natin na mag-fail, no? Pero dapat lahat pasado yan. So, if a candidate for class C fails element 3 and 4, pero nakapasa ka ng element 2, class D. Okay? So, pero dapat pasa natin lahat para lahat tayo class C. Okay? Then we have the class B. Yan. So, once you pass the class C and may license ka na, pwede ka na mag-take agad ng class B. Kung gusto mo, after next week, pwede na agad yun. Walang problema. So, you have to take the element 5, 6, and 7. So, signal frequencies and emissions, circuit components, operating procedures. So, I think next week, meron din tayong discussion on this. Okay? And syempre, yung extra class. Yung class A. So, apat na element. So, we have the written exam, element 8, 9, and 10. So, we have the practical circuits, antenna and transmission lines, and radio wave propagation, plus the element 1, which is the international Morse code. So, five words per minute. Okay? By the way, kailan ka pwede mag-take ng class A from class B? So, from class B to class A, at least one year. So, bakit? Para makapag-prepare for the elements 8, 9, 10. Medyo mahaba-haba rin yung review nito. And the element 1. So, sa element 1, you need to practice. Okay, so how to pass? So, average of 70%. Not less than 50% on any elements. Okay? So, 70%. Mahirap yung average na 70 tapos walang less than 50. So, minsan, mas mataas dapat. So, yan. So, at least. Okay? Then, for the Morse code, 3 fourth. At least 3 fourth of the transmitted text and 1 minute continuous transcription. 
Though medyo complicated yung pag-check ng Morse code exam, pero as much possible, lahat ma-decode ma natin. Okay? Lahat ma-decode. Walang mali. So, practice. Okay, may mga special candidates tayo. We have the yung mga electronics engineers and professional electronics engineers. Yung mga first class radio telephone operator at saka first or second class radio telegraph operator. So, pwede na sa agad silang class B. Ala, unfair naman yun. Kasi element to lang itatake nila. Tapos hindi pa sila dadaan ng class C. So, NTC ruled on that. no? So, may uh, memorandum circular on that. Okay, so sila yung ano diretso na ng class B. Okay? So ngayon, pumasa ka na ng exam. So pwede ka na magkaroon ng or pwede ka na mag-apply for license and ma-assignan ka na ng call sign. So ito, ito yung pinakaabangan kapag pasa ng amateur radio exam. By the way, ang exam morning Afternoon, may result na agad. So, ganun kabilis lumabas ang resulta. Okay? Pag pumasa, diretso na apply ng license. Pag hindi pumasa, pwede mag-apply ulit for retake. Okay? So, ngayon, let's see, pumasa ka na. So, you have the call sign. Ito na yung issued by NTC. May parking ba sa NTC? Mag-exam meron po sa loob at sa labas. Yung sa labas, medyo pababantay nyo lang po. Okay? So, consisting of numbers and letters, it is unique and recognized internationally. So, six, maximum of six character. So, the first two character is the prefix. So, it defines what class are you. Then, we have the X, district number, and the three letter, which is the suffix. So, example, DV1, PPC. So, isa sa mga uh, founder ng Radio Engineering Circle, DB1 PPC, tsaka si 4F1 SBY. So, take note of the how it is written. So, yung first two letter or first two characters, the prefix. The next is the number, district number, and the suffix. Tatlong letter lang yan. Okay? So, ano yung prefix? So, nakadepende dun kung anong class at kung club ba siya o individual amateur operator. So, pag class D, DY o kaya 4H. Pag class C, DW o kaya 4G. Pag class B, DV o kaya... Ah, sorry. Pag class C is 4, uh, 4G. Pag class B ay 4I. Take note, 4I yan ha. Then, we have the class A. We have the DU. Then, additional 4F. Tsaka 4E. Okay? Pag club naman, ang ginagamit natin is DX o kaya DZ. Like DZ1 PUP. Yan. Uh, club yan. Okay. Sa suffix naman, typically si NTC nag-assign yan. Sequential. So like, for example, si 4F2KWT yan. Si Tito Hill. Then we have 4G1JPS. Yung isa sa mga magtotok mamaya. Pero mapapansin nyo rin may mga two letters like yung call sign ko, 4F1JJ, 4F1PH, saka DU1MS. Paano kaya yun? These are vanity call sign. So at least your A, class A, para magkaroon ka ng two-letter na suffix. Okay. Okay, kanina may sinabi district number. So we have nine districts. Nine amateur radio districts and these are governed by NTC. And ito, take note ha, Philippines is under IARU. Ano ba yung IARU? So, yan yung tinatawag na International Amateur Radio Union. So, paano ba din divide? So, di ba we have how many regions? We have the 13 regions plus the uh, Cordillera Administrative Region and Bangsamoro ARMM. Okay? So, aside from that, eh, bakit pa nine lang? So, this is how the districts are divided. Oh, bakit yung Region 4 tsaka NCR District 1? Yes. So, kaya iba ang assignment ng district sa amateur. So, take note of this. Pag District 1, that's NCR and Region 4. So, yung Calabarzon tsaka Mimaropa. District 2, 
So region 1 and region 2 plus yung Cordillera Administrative Region. So kapag nasa Baguio ka, district 2 yun. So ang call sign is 2 by 2 dun sa uh, call sign niya. So for example, 4F2. Yan. District 3, so madaling tandaan, Region 3. No? Sa Bulacan, Bataan, Tarlac, Pampanga, uh, Nueva Ecija. Okay. Then we have the District 4, yan sa Region 5, Bicol Region. District 5 is in Region 8, Eastern Visayas. So medyo maano no, medyo ano, kung makabase ka lang sa region number, mahihirapan ka. So you have to remember this. So District 5 is Region 8, Eastern Visayas, so Summer and Leyte. Okay? District 6, we have the Western Visayas, Region 6. District 7 is re uh, Region 7. So Region 6, yan, Iloilo, Capiz, Antique, Gimaras. And masarap ang manga dyan. Okay? Then District 7, we have the Central Visayas, yan, Cebu, and so on. Okay? Then District 8, ayan, Region 9, the Zamboanga Peninsula, Region 12, yung Sox Sargent, and inclusion of Isabela City in Basilan. So may itong Isabela City in Basilan is part of District 8. Well, District 9 is Region 10, Region 11, and Region 13 kasama ang BARM. Okay? Oh, checkpoint. Philippines is under what ITU region? Okay, a good letter C, region 3. Next. Oh, what is one of the frequencies of the emergency channel on the 2 meter band? Letter B, very good. Then we have, okay, what provinces belong to amateur radio district 6? Ah, ah kasabi ko lang kanina, district 6. Ah, madaling tandaan yan. District 6 is region 6. Very good, letter C. Lahat na sama sa Region 6, Iloilo, Negros Occidental, and Capiz. Okay. So ngayon, may call sign ka na, may license ka na rin. So kailan, ano ba yung effectivity ng license natin? So minimum of 1 year, maximum of 3 years with the expiration date falling on the licensee's birthday. So, so gaya ng driver's license or PRC license. So sa birthday na ka, Depende. Okay? So, pag birthday nyo, marami kayong i-re-renew na license. Pero meron din itong na lifetime or permanent RSL. So, it's valid for the lifetime of the licensee. O konti lang ang meron pang lifetime RSL. Okay? So, ngayon, ano ba yung scope or authority ng license? So, install, own, operate the authorized equipment for an amateur fix in the appropriate Frequency band for his class on a non-interference basis. So, take note of the non-interference basis. Hindi pwedeng gamit ka lang ng gamit, pero meron ka palang nasasatawan. Okay? Take note, authorized equipment should be registered. Okay, how many days before expiration should the application for renewal of the matured license be filed? 60 days, 30 days, 90 days, 15 days. Letter? Letter B, very good. At least 30 days. Next. Okay. So, paano ngayon mag-renew? Okay, kunyari nag-expire license mo. Nakakalimutan mo ngayon yung expiration niya. Akala mo this year, last year pa pala nag-expire. So, if it's less than two years, so it may be renewed by just filing a renewal application tapos may mga arrears and surcharges equal to 100% of the license fee for every year or a fraction of a year that the license has expired. Okay? Paano naman kapag two, more than 2 years but less than 5 years? So, same as previous. Renew ka lang ulit. Pero, pwede ka nang ma-assign ng different call sign. By the way, your call sign is not permanent. Okay? Kapag hindi ka nakapag-renew ng more than 2 years but less than 5 years, ah, pag hindi na available yung call sign mo, ah, hindi na pwede. Iba na gagamit nun. No? Pero depende pa rin. Paano kung hindi na-assign yung call sign mo na yun? Ah, pwede mo pa rin i-renew on the same call sign. 
Okay? Pero, kapag more than 5 years ka na, same as previous, and applicant need to attend a seminar on current radio laws and ethics. Though, ah, uh, and, and. Ito. Ito. Checkpoint number eight. If a classy amateur applies for renewal of his license for another three years, but his 14 months expired, how much shall he pay the NTC for his radio station license? Okay. So, paano? Ano sagot? Letter? Ah, maraming, ano, maraming... Masagot. So, letter D. Ha, paano nangyari yun? So, 144 times 3 kasi you're going to renew for another 3 years. Pero, nag-expire ka ng 14 months. So, 14 months is more than 1 year. So, you have to pay the surcharge of 144 pesos plus 2 months pa. Kasi 14 months eh. So, 12 months. So, that's 144. Tapos, yung fraction nun, that's equal to half. That's 72 pesos. So, 144 plus 72 plus 3 times 144, that is 720. No? So, oo, mahirap yung math, pero mahirap din magbayad kapag lumagpas sa expiration. Okay, so always check the expiration date of your license. Madali yung tandaan yan, birthday nyo lang. Yung year lang yung tatandaan niya. Okay? Okay. So, pag nag-re-run nyo pala ng license, kailangan nyo ng proof of amateur activity. Ayan. Nag-DXing ka ba? Nag-technical experimentation? Lahat yan kailangan may proof, may technical documentation. So, copy of endorsement from an amateur radio club. Ah, kailangan pala nito. Kailangan ng endorsement na uh, you're active in the amateur radio. May pirma ng club president. Okay, so shall be okay. Paano kung gusto mo modify yung license? So you can always file for modification of license. For example, you upgraded from class B to class A kasi pumasa ka na ng four elements, yung 8, 9, 10 plus the element 1. Ah, you have to modify your license. Then you have to, let's say, uh, dun sa mga YL or yung mga uh, young lady natin. So for example, they become XYL naging ano na sila married so if they want to change their name so they have to modify their license also if they're going to transfer the location of the fixed station naglipat ng bahay so you have to modify the license and also kapag mag-add delete or change ng transceiver you have to modify your license okay for example na wala nasira or uh, napunit yung duplicate li your, your license mo. So, ayaw mo naman ng pangit future and license. You have to file for duplicate. Okay? O, ito. Checkpoint number nine. What general subject is covered by element three? Letter? C. Very good. Next. When is a citizen of another country qualified to take the examination? Kapag may passport. Lahat tayo may passport. Okay, very good. Letter C. If it has the same or if the country extends the same privileges to Filipino nations, uh, Filipino nationals rather. Tawag natin dun is the reciprocal agreement. Okay, so ito. Mabilis na lang to Rules governing operation of amateur stations. So, okay. Paano kapag portable? So, you have the call sign. Let's say you're from District 1. So, kunayan, daga NCR ka. Then you're going to Nueva Ecija. So, you have to place or you have to put your call sign suffix by adding the word portable or mobile followed by the district. For example, taga uh, NCR. Then you're going to Nueva Ecija, which is District 3. So, kapag nag-transmit ako doon using portable or using mobile, I'll be using 4F1, JJ, or 4 Foxtrot 1, Juliet, Juliet, Mobile 3, o kaya Portable 3, Slant 3, or Stroke 3. Pero madalas, Portable 3, or iba, Stroke 3. Okay? Okay, Portable Operation in another district, 
may limitation yon hindi pwedeng ah nagpapano portable ako pupunta sa ibang lugar then okay na yon I'll just use the portable or mobile. Hindi pwede. Dapat must not exceed 30 days without NTC authority. Pero kapag lumagpas ka ng 30 days, you have to seek the permission of NTC. Pero kapag umabot ka ng 4 months, you have to modify your license. For example, si DB1 PPC from Manila magta-transfer na siya sa Tugigaraw. Since Tugigaraw is in District 2, so it becomes DB2 PPC. So, madali lang naman tandaan. Okay? So, okay. Posting of call sign. Lahat ng call sign natin dapat posted on conspicuously place. Okay? Or displayed conspicuously. So, immediately visible. So, pag fixed station, yan, nakalagay sa labas. Sa entrance premises. At least 10 cm high. Pag mobile, nasa windshield. Okay? Minsan lalagay na sa likod. Pero mas da ang sabi, dapat na sa windshield. Okay? Then we have the portable station. So, sa equipment naman nakalagay. Okay. Prohibited action. So, operation without valid ROC, radio operator certificate, or radio station license. Bawal na bawal yun. Then, bawal kumanta sa amateur radio. Okay? Hindi naman sa bawal pag ano pag may mga gatherings pero bawal mag-transmit ng music profane or indecent words or language and commercial messages. So bawal magbenta, bawal magmura at bawal kumanta o magpatugtog using the amateur radio. And transmission with false or misleading identification. Nako, medyo delikado to. So it's a, or with intention to facilitate a criminal act. Yan yung mga nagbabanta. Nako, mahirap yan. Okay, so pag interfering naman, so you have to cease operation immediately and you cause harmful, or if you cause harmful interference, so pag ganun nangyari, you cease operation right away. Kaso, eh, minsan, ano, hindi naman ako yung nagkakos ng interference kasi mahina lang yung ano ko, may malakas na radio. So, pag nakita ni NTC yun, they may limit the power of the station, suspend the operation, or temporarily close. So, it depends or it's on a case-to-case -case basis. Okay. So, ah, pwede pala gumamit ng ano. Kapag hindi pa license yung isa, yung isang tao, pwede pa niyang gamitin yung license ng iba. Yes, as long as. Licensee controls directly the entire operation. Ah, pwede pala, basta nandun sa or directly nagko-control. Kumbaga, pwede yun yung mga tinuturuan pa lang and so on. Okay? Okay. Check my number level. What type of NTC modification of the amateur license can be filed? Letter D. Basta nag-upgrade or nalumipat or nag-install ng additional transmitter or transceiver pwede yun i-file or dapat i-file yun for modification. O, ito. Ito, wala to sa ano. Pero, uh, ito yung mga permits na ini-issue ni NTC. So, paano kapag gusto mong mag-acquire ng radio transmitter or receiver? So, madaling tandaan. Authorizing possession. So, permit to possess. Okay? Paano naman kapag bibili ka? Permit to purchase. Okay, tama. Okay. So ngayon may may ano ka na? May license ka na, alam mo na yung rules of operation and so on. So minimum, okay. Gusto mo magtayo ng amateur radio club. So kailangan 25 na licensed amateur member. Okay? So 25, so bubuka 25. Then it should be registered with SEC and duly recognized amateur association by NTC. Okay? Under the supervision of the club trustee and execute the NTC a memorandum of agreement. Okay? So, duly recognized amateur association. So, Radio Engineering Circle is a, a duly recognized amateur association. So, we have registration with Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay? So, by the way, in terms of the amateur radio organization, we only have one amateur radio organization. That's PARA. Okay? Philippine Amateur Radio 
Association. It's the only recognized National Society of Amateur that was issued by NTC. Okay? And yung station naman, same din, di ba? Si sa club, kailangan may 25 license amateur member. Dapat may trustee. Ano yung trustee ulit? Class A with 5 years. Uh, class A of at least 5 years. Okay? So, siya yung para magsusupervise ng amateur radio club station. Okay. Ito, wala to. Sa ano. Pero kailangan pala, pag meron tayong station, amateur radio station, whether individual or club, we should have a logbook. Pero gano ba katagal kinikip yung logbook? So, sabi, it should be two years. Take note ha, general na logbook to. Two years dapat. Pero kapag may distress traffic or merong emergency traffic, it should be five years. Okay? So, take note ha, pag normal lang na radio logbook, walang distress traffic, that's two years. Kapag may distress traffic, five years. Okay? So, if you have any questions, so mamaya sa Q&A natin, we tanong. Okay? So, thank you very much. On behalf of uh, poor Foxtrot 1, uh, Shera Victor Yanki, eh, uh, this is poor Foxtrot 1, Juliet Juliet. So, thank you very much. And 73 and mabuhay. Moving on to our next topic, which is element 3. The Electrical and Electronics Principles. Please welcome our speakers, Mr. John Paul Santos, for Gulf One Juliet Papashera, our Chief Strategy Officer, and of course, Engineer Dana K. Pauses, for Gulf One Charlie Lima Gulf, the former VPIA of Regulation Section. Good morning, everyone. So for today, we're going to talk about elementary or electrical and electronics principle. So... Uh, I will be with uh, for Golf One, Charlie Lima Golf, to discuss this uh, topic. So let's start. So for today, we have two, two, four topics. So let's start with basic electricity and electronics. Next one is DC circuits. The third one is AC circuit. And the fourth one is basic communications. So to start with, so let's start with the atom, which is uh, all matter is made of atom. So, atom is the smallest particle of a basic element, which forms the physical substance we know as a solid, liquid, and gas. So, we know that uh, everything that we have in the in Earth is made of atoms, and this atom is uh, have a uh, components like the nucleus, which is at the core of a certain uh, of that particle, and then outside at uh, outside that nucleus we have the electrons, which is a uh, going around. Like, uh, like we have in a solar system, uh, like the planets, uh, which are called electrons. And inside that uh, nucleus is the protons, which, which is the amount of uh, number of electrons is also the same amount of the protons. So as we talk about atoms, so we have particles involved in it. So each particle have a charge level. So electron have a negative it is a negatively charged uh, particle. So it, it, uh, the value of it is negative 1.602 times 10 to the 19 coulombs. So the unit for charge is coulombs. And for the proton, we have the, uh, which is the positively charged that is uh, located inside the, the nucleus and its value is 1.602 times 10 to the 19 coulomb. And the new, Neutron is do, do not have any charge because it, it is a neutral charge that balances the, the both charges. And we can observe the, the ter, on the third column the, the mass of each uh, particle. So uh, since we're talking about atoms, so we're going to discuss about conductors and insulators as well as the semiconductors. Since uh, uh, we are talking about electronics, so these three components are really uh, needed in order to uh, for us to create an electronic devices or any any material that we are using now uh, for for the use of uh, radio devices like that so for the conductors uh, it is defined as the materials with less than four valence electrons so uh, to give you a background about valence electrons so 
valence electron is the the free electrons located of a cer uh, uh, located on a certain atom that can be pulled through or pulled through outside its uh, uh, outside the atom. So it can be pulled through or it can be uh, it can accept to uh, create the eight uh, uh, valence electrons. So for the conductors, we have less than four valence electrons. So if we imagine, so if we have uh, the four valence electrons, so uh, which is less than, so it is uh, uh, the four valence electron is for the conductor is uh, is going to another atom in order to be to have a flow of electricity. So it allows electrical current to flow easily because no more free electrons. So yung free electrons natin is uh, uh, ito yung hinu uh, nagmumove in order to to have a flow of electric current. So in conductor, so the usual value is less than four because uh, if we have uh, a complete, uh, for example, we have a six valence electrons. So it is really hard for us to move that six compared to a less than, uh, less than four. And then example of it is are the copper, aluminum, gold, and silver. That's the, uh, that's the most common uh, conductor we use, diba? Right? So the most uh, con uh, most uh, practical we, uh, conductor we use is the copper because of the cost and also the 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 property of its uh, material. Next one is the insulator. So these materials are having four more than four valence electrons. So it, this is above four. So this is five, six, seven, eight. So uh, most likely, these are the material that. We, it is hard for us to move the electron. So uh, it can't uh, have a free flow of uh, electrons. Uh, so as I have said, it, it will not allow the flow of current because there are less than or no free electrons. So example of this, glass, air, plastic, rubber, and wood. So the use of our insulator is, is uh, uh, to, to protect our conductor usually, to have a safety, a safe environment, for example. For example, a wire without a uh, insulator may have a, a safety issues on the user itself. So, and also insulator are also used in our uh, capacitors and other materials. Uh, we will discuss it later for the capacitors. So the next one is the semiconductor. So the semiconductor have a four electrons in the outermost ring. So ito yung uh, material na na balance yung valence electron which is on the fourth so it can be moved or it it cannot be moved so most likely uh, ito yung mga ginagamit sa electronic devices natin so because of the semiconductor we're able to have the radios the the televisions the monitors the laptops so that's the semiconductor and as I mentioned, it's neither gain nor lose electrons, but share them with similar atoms. So example of it are carbon, silicon, and germanium. So uh, chemistry 101. So uh, if we we able to to cut down the uh, to have the, their valence electrons, so carbon, silicon, and germanium have a four valence electron. So let's move on the electrical units. So this is, since this training is for fundamental, so we need to know what are the basic units we are need to, uh, we are to use. So first one is the coulomb. So the coulomb is the an SI unit. Elect, uh, this is a unit that is intended for a charge. So equal to the quantity of electricity conveyed in one second by current of one ampere. So this is the charge that the the uh, that is moving through an electric circuit. This is the, uh, this is the one that is flowing. So the next one is the voltage, or uh, we have a symbol of E or V. So E stands for energy or V for voltage. So how do you define it? The electrical force that moves the charged particles, such as electrons. So in an electrical environment or electronics environment, the only thing that we move is the electrons. So in the voltage, so in a simple simple matter, yung voltage, ito yung puwersa na tumutulak para uh, 
yung para itulak yung ating mga uh, yung columns kasi for example we have a number of cars in the in the highways and then we want to to push it through so that's the force we need to apply in order that the cars will move so uh, the uh, uh, the higher the force the higher that we can we can made it to push through that cars so the next one is the current or the amperes uh, it is measured in amperes with a symbol of i so any directional moment of electrical charges such as electrons so yung current naman ito yung uh, paggalaw ng electrons dun sa ating mga equipment so ang nangyayari is uh, kumbaga kung ikukumpara natin to sa 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 flow of water ito po yung pressure gaano kalakas yung pressure na dumadaan sa tubig natin and then the voltage that's the bulb we are using so kung lalakihan natin yung bulb lalakas yung pressure di ba and then ma mas malaki yung puwersa so yung pressure ay tumataas because uh, na, uh, so yun yung yun yung layman's term natin for the voltage and the current so that two quantities is directly proportional so pag sinabi natin directly proportional ay kapag tumataas ang value nung isa ganun din ang value nung isa so for example if we have 5 volts approximately we can have a, a, a 3 ampere also and then if we have 10 volts and then it would also increase to the 6 ampere so later on we'll discuss it on the ohm's law theory so for the resistance or uh, we have the symbol r and the unit for it is ohm or with the symbol omega so this is a property of material to oppose or limit the flow of current or charge so ito po yung ginagamit natin na device in order na malimit natin yung pagpasok ng kuryente ng voltage o ng kuryente which is the current so most of our devices merong resistance this is a, a type of a, a devices na <clears throat> na uh, sorry passive devices we have this as passive devices because it is the value of it is a fixed one so the next unit is the capacitance uh, which is with the symbol of C and with a unit of farad. So, named after Michael Faraday. So, it is a measure of how much electric energy is stored in an electrostatic field. So, ito po yung uh, type ng devices na kung paano natin in-store yung energy. So, a uh, basic... Uh, a uh, basic example that we can relate is the battery. Battery is a form of capacitor, which there are two, two polarized substances, which is between them, there is a force between them, so, so uh, uh, which the battery is able to store the charge. So, yun po yung basic uh, example natin ng isang capacitor. Or uh, we can have the, uh, the definition of a capacitance. So the next one is the inductance or uh, with the symbol of L uh, and in the units of Henry. So ability to store uh, energy in magnetic field. So yung, then the next one is the frequency. So since we're talking about the radio, so definitely we're about to, to talk more about the frequency itself. So it is in the unit of hertz with the symbol of small f. So it is the uh, number of occurrence of repeating event per unit time or cycles per second in alternating current direction. Next one is the prefixes. So since kanina, di ba, may tinatawag, uh, may sinabi yung ating first speaker na si 4F1JJ na uh, megahertz, uh, kilohertz. So that's the prefix na ginagamit natin in order to simplify yung mga mahabang terminology natin. So to start, we have the exa is 18, the peta is 15, tera is 12, giga, mega is 6. So what's the common is the uh, usually we have the kilo, the mega. And also we have the micro which is on the negative 6 and then a milli on the negative 3 and then a centi is negative 2. So 
uh, please take note of the micro is the unit is mu we call it mu so that's a that's a greek uh, symbol so that's not m that's a mu so we call it a mu so so you need to uh, uh dito kailangan niyo pong kabisaduhin yan para mas mapamirealize natin yung mga terminologies na ginagamit natin and then we're going to the flow of uh, electricity. So we we'll start about to direct current or DC. This is the the principle of batteries. So this is uh if we have the we we have the level of voltage here, which is the amplitude, and we have the time here. So uh, the graph of a direct current is a flat. Graph. So, constantly all throughout the time, so kung nagsimula ako ng alas 8 ng umaga hanggang mag alas 12 ng umaga, yung graph niya ay hindi po magbabago. Diretso lang po yan. Possibly na bumaba siya kapag kung sa battery yan kasi magkakaroon ng discharge effect. Ganun. Pero it's still a single line. Okay? And then, let's move to the DC, uh, the AC. Sorry. So, the AC is an Alternating current. So, an electric current that reverses its direction many times per second at regular intervals. So, we have still the amplitude or the voltage level and we still have the time here. So, the amplitude and uh, changes through time. So, may kita natin sinusoidal. That's the common, that's the common waveform when we have the alternating current. We can also have a square wave, the triangular wave, uh, we also have the uh, modified sine wave, so it differs on what application. But most of the time, when we're talking about uh, uh, radio, so the term is the alternating current because we're talking about frequency. Okay. And then let's go to the type of circuit. So we have the open, close, and the short. Actually, for the open circuit. So, what's an open circuit? So, when any part of path is broken, the circuit is incomplete because there is no conducting path. So, ito yung alimbawa. Ang example po nito ay may ilaw po kayo and then may switch. Pinatay nyo po yung switch. That's already an open circuit kasi hindi na mag-flow yung current. So, most likely, kapag open, so wala nga pong flow ng electricity. So, open circuit we also denote is at off position, off, so patay. So the next one is the closed circuit. So this closed circuit is the voltage source as a closed path across its terminal, allowing a complete flow of current. So balik tayo dun sa ilaw at yung switch mo. Inon mo yung switch, umilaw. So that is a closed circuit. So nag-close yung switch. So nag-close din yung ating path. So ang denotion natin dito is the on position. So that's the on position. The next one is the short circuit. The short circuit is the voltage source has a closed path across its terminal, but the resistance is practically zero, resulting to too much current. So pag sinabi natin short circuit, there is no resistance between the, two, the source. So we have, if we have the battery, we have the positive and the negative. And then this is the resistance. Uh, if there is no resistance on this material and you just connect it, it will then cause a, a short circuit. Most commonly, this is a very unsafe act because it will can cause arc flash. Uh, it, can, it can electrocution. So that's a, and also it can cause fire. So this is how we graphically arrange the, the, the circuit. So we have the open circuit. So you can take note that there is a switch on this. So that's open. Then for the close, so we have a complete path of electricity. Even uh, on this second example, they just uh, rumbled the, the connections, but then there, it is still a closed circuit. When we talk about short circuit, uh, there is no resistive uh, application. So the source of positive charge just go to the negative charge. That is very, very dangerous in the electricity to have uh, to short the positive and the negative side. So also, if you, you have a screwdriver or you have the long nose, you, you put it on your socket, it will cause a short circuit. And then the next one is the 
uh, this is another example of the short circuit. So there is a resistor, but then uh, the positive and the negative charge meet on a certain point, not just uh, allowing it to go through the to the resistor. So ano po yung konsepto uh, ng electricity po natin? Ang electricity po natin, kung saan po pinakamabilis siyang pwedeng dumaan, doon po siya dadaan. Siyempre, kung, kung gumawa ka po ng daan dito na hindi na siya dadaan dito sa may, resist, sa, na, sa may resistor, which is may resistance nga, so uh, bakit pa ako dadaan doon? Eh, may shortcut naman pala dito. So, na, wala, walang resistive force or walang magpipigil sa akin. So ganun po yung electricity. So, just like we have in lightning. So lightning always strike uh, yung pinakamalapit sa kanya, di ba? So also, uh, kung ano yung pinakamataas. So, hindi niya ini-strike yung lupa kasi may hirapan siya because of the resistance of the air. So, yun po yung concept ng ating short circuit. Okay? The next one is the direction of current. So, we have two flows. So, remember this, we have the we have the electron flow which flow the, which the current flows from the negative side. This is the vatic. So, this is the, the positive side. This is the negative side. So we have the electron flow going from the negative side going to the positive side. That's the electron flow. So the conventional flow is the from the positive side going to the negative side. So fr from positive to negative. So yung electron, so when we talk about electron, diba, usually ang may isip nyo negative, lagi yung charge. So you, you take note of that. Uh, na kapag electron so i have the negative so most probably the 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 flow is from the negative going to the positive so let's talk about these circuits so just what i mentioned this is the resistor so this is the symbol usually in the simulation but then in schematic we have this symbol so yung pa ganun ganun po and then the symbol is denoted as omega so, passive circuit siya na nag-provide ng limit sa ating mga, sa ating flow of current. So, so ang nakakatawa dito sa resistor is, uh, so later on we, we'll have it. So, there are fixed, there are two types of resistor which is the fixed type resistor and the variable resistor. So, this is our example of fixed type, yung carbon composition, wire one film type. Usually, itong film uh, type resistor, ito yung pagbukas nyo ng halimbawa, television nyo, na, ng mga <coughs> ng laptop nyo, may may kita kayong parang tube, uh, tubo na maliit na may mga color code. So, yun, that's the fixed resistor. The value is fixed. So, if I say it is 5 mega ohm, that's 5 mega ohm. Okay? And we have the variable resistor. If we have the variable resistor, so from the word itself, it is variable. So, we can actually uh, vary the 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 value so that's we call it potentiometers or rheostat so the example of potentiometers are the if you have a radio uh meron iniikot diba to increase the volume to to increase decrease the volume so that's the variable resistor so habang ini-increase niyo yung ano yung yung volume bumababa yung resistance kasi that's a variable resistor and if you were just decreasing the value so, bumaba, bumab, tumataas naman yung resistance. So, these are examples of uh, resistor. So, this the adjustable or the the uh, variable. So, these are the fixed, the wire wound, the carbon film. So, yun, just what I talk about. So, ayun siya. Meron siyang band. Then, we have the surface mounted resistor. And then, we also have a large resistor. Ito po yan yung mga malalaki. So, yun po yung may mga malalaking heat sink. We use it on a load bank test to test a certain equipment for a certain discharge curve. Okay. And then we for the fixed resistor, so usually we have here how to read it. So we have the most common type of band uh, is the four band. So we have this the first digit, the second digit. So, bakit siya tinawag na 4 band ulit? So, may kita natin, apat lang yung band niya. Pag 5 band naman, lima din yung band. Sorry, may, na may nawawala dito yung kulay. Pero this is a 5 band. And then, for the 6 band, so, anim yung kulay niya. 
So, for the power band, so, yung first digit, it denotes uh, uh, second digit, third. So, ano po yung kailangan nating tandaan? So, uh, tandaan po natin yung kulay ng rainbow. Rainbow lang po yung color coding ng ating resistor. So, we denote this as BB, Roy, GB. BB is black brown. ROI is Roy. So, R, red, orange, yellow. G is green. B is blue. G, V, so, G, B, yung V is violet. And then, we have the gray and white. So, the gold and silver is an additional color. So, for the first digit, it denotes the value. So, we have the one. For example, this is brown. Then the second digit denotes the, the second digit of the code. And then for the third digit, this denotes the multiplier. For a per band resistor, yung pangatlo pong digit, sinasabi niya na po kung ano yung multiplier natin. So we have 1, 2 times 10 to the fifth kasi po green yung ating pangatlong digit. And then po yung pangapat na digit natin denotes the uh, tolerance. So... Uh, may kita po natin yung gold is plus minus uh, 5%. So, this is the the tolerance color. So, pwede nyo po yan. Commonly po, 5 and 10% yung meron tayo kasi 4 band yung laging ginagamit natin. So, yan yung mga uh, plug. Sinabing plus minus 10, so you multiply 1,200 kilo ohm. So, bakit naging 1,200? Kasi po limang zero. So, yung K is 3 and then yung dalawang natitirang 0 is nilagay niya na lang po dito. So, kaya naging 1,200. <clears throat> so, 1,200 times, 1, times 0 0.05, uh, yun po yung value ng 5%. I-add po natin yun sa 1,200 at i-minus po natin sa 1,200. Yun po yung kanyang tolerance. It might ha not have a uh, exact value of 1,200 kasi uh, it, has a, it has an electronic equipment so may tolerance po yan. Pwedeng magbago. So pag 5%, masyadong mababa. So pag 5 band and 6 band, ito yung mga precision resistor natin. So just look at always the last digit. So for the ano, for the 6 band, so we have this, the, the first, uh, first, second, third digit. And then the fourth digit is the multiplier and the fifth digit is the tolerance. So we have this connection for resistor. So if we connect it on a series, we just add it. Okay? And then uh, if we have it on uh, parallel, so the formula is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Pero dapat po dito sa taas ay may 1 over po lahat niyan para to denote yung negative 1. Okay? So, resistance is additive pag parallel. So, we just need to some complicated uh, ano, computation. Then, the next one is the capacitor. So, the capacitor has a two uh, type of capacitor. We have the unpolarized. So, wala po itong uh, label ng uh, positive or negative. So, ito po yung usual na filter capacitors na ginagamit natin sa mga radio equipment. So, hindi po tayo matatakot kahit mailagay natin yung kabilang paa dun sa positive, tas yung kabilang paa ay sa negative. Hindi po puputok. Pero pag dito po sa polarized capacitor, so there is a tendency if you wouldn't able to to put the right polarity on the source, pwede pong pumutok yung ating capacitor. So parang battery po yan, ni-reverse mo dun sa isa pang battery, hindi po putok po yun kasi that's a reverse ano. <clears throat> Kasi pinabalik mo lang. That's a short circuit. So, this is the note and this is the uh, devices na kaya mag-store ng ating charges. So, next one, there are so many capacitor types. Ito pong mga nasa example is commonly ito po yung mga unpolarized. So, may iba-ibang material. Yung paper po pwedeng may capacity yan na mag-store ng energy. The next one is the capacitor or computation natin series parallel. So sa capacitor, kabalik na po siya ng resistor. <clears throat> sa capacitor po, uh, kapag parallel connection po tayo, additive po yung ating solution para malaman natin yung total capacitance. Add, add, add. 
uh, sa series naman po, pag sinabi nating series, connected po yan ng sunod-sunod. Sinabi natin, so pag may naputol, mag-open, di ba? So sa parallel kasi kahit may map, pag naputol dito, meron ka pa dito. So <clears throat> sa series, so ang computation natin is parang uh, parallel naman na resistor. So bakit sila magkaiba? Kasi po yung resistance is uh, e uh, resistive effect siya. Ito naman pong kapasitor is uh, able to, to store energy. <clears throat> Next one is the inductor. So, ito yung coil. So, ito po yung may kita natin. Yung electric pan po natin, example po yan ng inductor. So, kinocoil po natin siya para mag-produce ng magnetic field. On a certain electric field, when, when th this is the electric, uh, the electric field, pag nag-flow po yan sa isang electric wire, definitely po, kahit hindi po natin i-coil yan, meron pong magnetic field dyan perpendicular to that. So, umiikot po yan. So, pag nag-flow po yan, mag-flow po yung magnetic field. So, that we can generate electricity. <clears throat> so, that's allow our electric pan to be able to, to, to move in counterclockwise or clockwise position because there's an electric field and there's the magnetic field whirling around that certain uh, 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 material. So, Yung inductor po natin has also ability to store energy. So, the number of turns dictates how the inductor can able to store energy. <clears throat> so, ito po yung mga klase. So, ito po yung nasa loob ng circuit. So, meron pong parang resistor. So, usually, ito yung mga nasa radio. So, mga fix yan. Tapos, may air wound. So, may kita po natin tong mga ganito. Yung may mga toroidal, may, may ferrite core. Sa mga radio, usually po sa AM, AM radio po, kasi gumagamit pa sila ng toroidal doon. So pag nag, nasira yung coil mo na yon sa AM radio type na yon possible distorted yung maririnig mo sa signal. Kaya most of the time, mas maselan po yung ating mga AM radio kesa po sa ating FM radio. Kasi uh, napaka-dependent po ng mga AM radio natin sa mga ginitong uh, uh, ating mga uh, inductors. So, pag naglagay ka ng another interference like the cell phone, so nagkakaroon ng distortion ng ating signal. So, ang ating inductor po ay katulad ng resistor. So, sinisiris lang po siya. So, pag parallel, same din, din po yun. So, we're now going to the Ohm's law. So, please take note of it. The only the original ohms law po ay hindi po ganit, hindi po uh, V equals IR. Ang formula po ng ohms law, when we talk about ohms law, that's I equals V over R. That's the ohms law. The other other terminology, that's the, the, the derived formula po ng ating ohms law. I represent the current, V represent the voltage, R represent the resistance. So, we have the I. Uh, and the voltage. So, if we increase the value of I, the value of voltage will also increase kasi directly proportional sila. So, if we, if, we if we have the resistance, so R is uh, inversely proportional to uh, current. So, pag naglagay tayo ng resistor, pinipigilan niya yung pag pagdaloy ng kuryente natin. So, ito po yung other derivation. So, pwede po V divided by I equals to R. Or V divided by R equals to I. I times R equals to V. So, yan po yung functional ng ating Ohm's law. So, yung Ohm's law po natin ay napakahalagang uh, unit kasi in every where you go, you can use Ohm's law. Lalo na sa ating mga... <coughs> may, may susunod kasi yung formula dyan. That's the power formula. Later on, we'll, uh, they will, uh, my partner will discuss it about the the power so uh, that's for the ohms law so let's uh, i will now um, turn over the the floor to dana to discuss more about the ac circuits and the basic communications thank you for g1 jps i am dana balses for golf one charlie lima golf now we'll talk about AC circuits. So as, as mentioned earlier, the alternating current is 
as polarity which alternates or reverses periodically. The graph shown below is what we call the sine wave. Sine wave has amplitude. So we have the amplitude, which is the height of the wave. It has the positive and negative peak. The next is the frequency, which is the number of cycles that happen every second. Then let's also mention the period, this, which is the time it takes to complete a cycle. Period and frequency are inversely proportional to each other. That's why we have the formula F is equal to 1 over T. And next is the wavelength. So wavelength is the distance between two similar points on two back-to-back -back waves, pointing crest-to-crest or trough-to-trough. -trough. And we will be discussing the power triangle. So the power triangle here represents three electrical concepts. First is the true power or P. Then next is the reactive power or Q and the apparent power or S. True power is the power in the resistor and is expressed in watts. The formula for true power is P is equal to I squared R or P is equal to E squared over R. Next is the reactive power, which is the power on the capacitor or inductor and is expressed in volt ampere, reactive, or VAR. The formula for reactive power is Q is equal to I squared X, or Q is equal to E squared over X. Then last is the apparent power, which is the phasor combination of the true power and reactive power. This is expressed in volt ampere, or VA. Formula is S is equal to I squared Z or S is equal to E squared over Z or S is equal to IE. By using the power triangle and trigonometry, let's recall that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse or co and cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Then the formula for S will be VI then for Q will be VI sine theta. And last is T is equal to VI cosine theta. So by minimizing the Q, we improve the power factor, which is the cosine theta. The closer we get it down to the x-axis, the better. Next is the reactance. So we have two types of reactants, the capacitive reactants and inductive reactants. So first, let's discuss the capacitive reactants. It is the opposition to the change of voltage across an element. And it has a formula of X sub C is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC, where F is the frequency and C is the capacitance in farad. Next is the inductive reactance, which has a symbol of X sub L, and it is the property of an AC circuit that opposes the change in current. So it has a formula of X sub L is equal to 2 pi FL, where F is, in, is the frequency in Hertz and L is the inductance in Henry. So let's proceed to impedance. The impedance with the symbol Z is the total opposition to the flow of alternating current. It is the combination of resistance and reactance. As you can see in your screen, you have the, an example of an RLC circuit. At very low frequency, X sub C is high and X sub L is low. And the circuit is predominantly capacitive. While at very high frequency, X sub C is low and X sub L is high and the circuit is predominantly inductive. Because of these characteristics, 
there will be a frequency at which x sub, x sub L is equal to x sub C because one increases while the other decreases. So this case of equal and opposite reactance is called resonance. And the, the frequency at which resonance occurs is called the resonant frequency where the formula is F is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of LC. So for series resonance, the inductive and the inductive reactants and capacitive reactants cancel each other, so the net reactance is zero. The current, as you can see here, is at maximum, while the impedance is at minimum. Uh, next is the parallel resonance, where the inductive reactance is equal in magnitude, but opposite in effect to the capacitive reactance. So for here, you can see that the current is at minimum while the impedance is at maximum. For the last topic, we have basic communications, which is also one of the most important topics. So communication is the process of exchanging information like what we are doing right now. In every communication systems, we have the information source where the intelligence or the information originates. Then we have the transmitter which sends out the information to the communication channel. The communication channel is also called the medium. And noise, are, noise is also in, introduced which interferes with the, with the information transmitted. At the end of the channel, we have the receiver, which picks up the information from the channel and directs it to the information destination. There are some basic terms used in basic communication. So as mentioned earlier, the frequency, which is the number of times a particular phenomenon occurs in a given period of time. Then wavelength also discusses discussed earlier the distance between two similar points on waves. Then last is the bandwidth, which is the portion of electromagnetic spectrum occupied by a signal. Uh, the wavelength is also, the wavelength has a formula of the C over F, where C is the speed of light, 3 times 10 raised to 8 meters per second and F is frequency in hertz. So as frequency increases, the wavelength decreases or, and the other way around. If frequency decreases, then, then the wavelength increases. So for the electromagnetic spectrum, so dito natin nalalaman yung kung saan ginagamit yung mga frequency range. So for ELF, it, it operates in 30 to 300 hertz, which is usually sa AC power line natin. Then next is the voice frequency, 300 to 3000 hertz the normal range of human speech. Then VLF, very low frequency, 3 to 30 kilohertz. Uh, these are usually where musical instruments make sounds as well as CLF and VF. So this is also used in some government and military communication since they are very reliable. Then LF, low frequency, 30 to 300 kilohertz. Um, commonly used sa, commonly used sa aeronautical, aeronautical and marine navigation and also used as subcarriers where signals are modulated by the baseband information. So next is the medium frequency, 300 to 3000 kilohertz. Its major application is AM radio broadcasting, so from 535 kilohertz to 1605 kilohertz. 
So next is the high frequency, 3 to 30 megahertz, also known as short waves. Commonly used sa simplex broad broadcasting and two-way radio communication. So also yung amateur radio nga dyan. As we, uh, they are part of the spectrum. Then VHF, major application is FM broadcasting and also mobile radio. Uh, also yung television channels natin from 2 to 13. Diyan din nag -occur. Then next is UHF, also called microwaves. TV channels from 14 to 51 takes place in this spectrum. And also some radar and navigation services. And so, uh, sometimes radio amateurs also have bands in this area. SHF or super high frequency, 3 to 30 gigahertz. Um, these, are, these are used for satellite communications and radar. So last is the extremely high frequency, 30 to 300 gigahertz. Uh, these, are, these are called millimeter waves and are used for SATCOMs also and specialized radar. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for G1 JPS and for G1 CLG for uh, discussing deep discussion of elementary. Again, it might be deep. And yeah, moving on to our final topic, which is element four, amateur radio practice. Please welcome our speaker, Mr. Leo Majid Almasan, Delta Uniform 3, Zulu X-ray, Paris Chief Finance Officer. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Leo Almazan. I uh, am the um, newly elected uh, para my chief financial officer. My call sign is WA6LOS when I'm in the U.S. and DU3 Zulu X-ray when I'm here in the Philippines. Uh, before I start, I would just like to add to uh, District 1 uh, Lawrence that uh, two, uh, no, two, two and a half years ago, na pala, uh, we were able to communicate with the International Space Station. I took as um, high school students from uh, UP three uh, UP um, Diliman and um, my um, uh, elect elect electronics engineering students from uh, Holy Angel University, and we had a a good twelve minutes talk to uh, uh, Captain Tingle, one of the um, astronauts in the International Space Station. That's all I'm going to say. All right. I uh, okay. We are sponsored by them. Um, of course, you know the um, PUP uh, Radio Engineering Circle, and we, we need to give them a, a hands of applause after this presentation. Okay, this part of the review is is uh, very difficult because it oh, it looks at your experience in amateur radio operation. Okay, without that, if this is your first time, it, it, it gets confusing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow it down, give some examples, so we could go through, uh, go through this thing uh, without a, uh, any kind of a hitch. Okay, when they're talking about SWR, standing wave ratio, we use that to measure antenna. Because sometimes we buy antennas, we build antennas, or vice versa. Okay, so we need a test equipment to test that. Uh, what you need is what we call a standing wave ratio, and on the... Um, uh, slide is a, an example of a um, standing wave ratio and to the right is a, uh, uh, the meter face of the SWR a meter. So the question is what reading on an SWR meter indicates perfect impedance match between the antenna and the feed line. The antenna is by the way uh, normally is 50 ohm um, antenna resistance. I did not say impedance, I said resistance. By the and uh, the, um, the one that is correct here is one is to one. You need a one is to one SWR in order to match your impedance and your feed line. Again, your feed line is also 50 ohms, all right? So let's move on to the next one. 
what precaution should be taken when measuring resistances in an ohmmeter? Again, this is an old safety. There's a lot of safety questions here. And the most uh, uh, common sense one is to ensure that the circuit is not powered. When you're working with anything that's electrical, make sure the circuit is not powered, all right? Okay, now what is the minimum safe distance from a power line when you're installing an antenna? Again, this is, again, your common sense safety um, question and answer. And um, here, the answer is one half wavelength of the operating frequency. Well, then you have to know what the operating frequency is. For example, if you're working on HF, a 40 meter band, okay? Because you want to communicate to the DU net on 40 meters. Okay, when you're working with it, and until a near power line, it has to be one half wavelength. 40 meters happens to be that particular wavelength, and half of that is around 30, uh, it's around 20 meters or 60 feet. Okay, so the correct answer there is you need one half wavelength distance. What is the instance in which the use of instrument with analog may be preferred over instrument with numerical digital readout? All right, I have um, a question about this question, but for now, the answer here is when you're adjusting tuned circuits, okay? It's, it has something to do with the movement of the meter versus the, um, um, how fast the uh, digital readout is, okay? So when adjusting tuned circuit, it's easier to do it with an analog a meter. Now, filters. What type of filter should be connected to a TV receiver? as a first step in preventing what they call RF overload or, or interference. There are so many kinds of filters there. On top is the low pass filter. The next answer is high pass filter. The next one is band pass filter. But then you need another one. It's called band reject filter or notch filter. As you can see from the two photos, it's a notch. You can see that notch? Okay. What that does is attenuate the signal that's um, being in the, is interfering with the TV receiver, right? You put that filter in there, and I pretty much guarantee you that signal is going to drop, right? That's why it's called a band reject. It's rejecting that particular frequency. Next is, um, what is the source of high pitch wine that varies with the engine, um, engine sound while you're driving, okay? Now, this is inside a mobile um, station. And you've noticed that even without a radio, uh, during um, using old uh, uh, automobiles, when there is a problem, uh, you can hear the whine. Right? That whine comes from the alternator because it's an alternating circuit. That's why it whines. So whining is alternator. All right, don't forget that. Now, which of the following controls should be used if the voice pitch of a single sideband seems too high or too low? Okay. Again, if you do not use any kind of uh, transceiver or radio, and this is very, very hard to understand. Okay. The correct answer there is the receiver receive incremental tuning clarifier. What this thing does, it tunes the the signal um, between its highs and lows. Uh, a signal normally has what we call a zero beat. That's the exact uh, frequency of that signal. But sometimes, just like me, I like it. I like the pitch high versus I like the pitch low. So what I do is I use a RIT clarifier and tune it while it's the best pitch for me. All right. So. The correct answer there is the RIT clarifier. This is for single sideband signal or even CW signal, all right? So you want, if you want to change the pitch, you use the RIT. Okay, oops. Okay, now consider RF safety. Again, safety here again. What precautions should you take whether you make adjustments to the feed line of a directional antenna system, all right? Again, anything that has something to do with safety, you take a look at the answers and, and take a look at the most common sense one. Well, the most common sense one here is be sure 
no one can activate the transmitter. Why? Because you're you're trying to fix a system here. You're trying to make some adjustment. In other words, some RF safety adjustment. So make sure that the transmitter is never activated. Well, you're going to get what we call RF burn. Now here's a good one. If you are the net control station of a daily HF net, what should you do if the frequency in which you normally meet is in use before the net begins? There are no frequencies owned by anybody in amateur radio. So if you have been conducting on that net for the last 50 years and somebody is there, you just don't shove them away, all right? The best thing to do is conduct the net on a clear frequency it says three to five kilohertz away. The reason for that is because all of our nets are in single sideband and the deviation or the separation is anywhere from two and a half to five KC. So if you do not want to interfere, you move three to five cases away plus or minus from that frequency. What is the purpose of a VOX? A VOX means a voice operated switch, all right? It has a sensitivity control. What that does is sets the audio level at which the transmitter activates because it's voice operated control. Nothing, you do not touch anything. Only your voice will switch or activate the transmitter when you talk, okay? So Vox, when you hear the word Vox, it means audio level. It's a voice activated switch. Now, what's the best instrument to use to check the signal quality of a continuous wave or single sideband phone transmitter? Uh, during the good old days, or I guess we can call that good old days, we use the one to the left. It's a monitor scope. It shows you the cat eye of a single sideband signal. It's a two-tone signal, which we will talk about in a little while. And now, the modern transceiver is the one to the bottom right. That is what a, uh, the signal looks like now. Okay, so you went from a single uh, monitor scope to a multi-purpose transceiver with its own monitor scope. Which of the following statement about station grounding is true? Here's a very important question here, also something to know, because a ground is very, very difficult to understand because there are two grounds, really pretty much two. One, safety ground and one RF ground. Here they're talking about RF spots can occur in the stations located above the floor. Why? It's because this station is in the second or third floor. All right? There is no direct grounding. The, te the, the technique in grounding is the shortest possible uh, wire from the equipment to ground. That is how you wire it. But what happens if you're two, three stories high? You can't do that possibly. So the technique there is to uh, uh, put a wire, a ground wire, that is not a harmonic of the frequency that you are trying to transmit, okay? Okay, so which of the following statement is true about grounding? Well, the only correct one there is C. RF hotspot can occur in a location above the ground floor. And the single sideband phone transmitter is 100% modulated, I mean, full blast. What will a speech processor do to a transmitter power. Again, if you are not using, I'm not used to HF, um, it's very, very hard to, to imagine this thing. What speech processor does, it, it it's, um, increases the power, the output power, the big envelope power of a transmitter. All right? If you do not have that, you're, 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 when you talk, it's, it's pretty much, um, um, it's, like a, it's like smooth sailing, all right? But sometimes you need more talk power so you put in a speech processor or what we call compressor. So it will increase the output power and make you sound uh, louder talking to someone. What, why is the best not to draw DC power for a 100 watt transmitter from an automobile cigarette lighter socket? Again, if you are not doing any kind of mobiling, this, this, you will never encounter this thing. But this is very, very important. I've seen people ask me, Leo, how come I'm putting um, my uh, radio supposed to put, uh, put out 100 watts? It can only put 25 watts. <laughs> well, maybe there's a little bit of problem in, in the wiring or in the current itself of uh, the 
the DC supply or the battery of your car, right? What it is really is because the socket, people try to use that uh, cigarette lighter socket. The wiring there is very, very small, all right? And the thing is, the higher, the thicker the gauge is the, the thicker the resistance, all right? In other words, it should be able to handle the power of 100 watts if it's thick enough. But if it isn't, just like the one in your cigarette lighter, it's, it's, gonna, it's, it's gonna get very, very hot or your power will start dropping down consistently, all right? So do not use a cigarette lighter if you have 100 watts equipment. Use straight to the battery. Now capture your effect, okay? Um, we don't really use this that much anymore because um, we don't use vacuum tubes. <laughs> but during the good old days, uh, a, a capture effects is a phenomenon in our FM reception, okay, your, your commercial FM or your amateur FM, in which the, only the stronger signal at or near the same frequency will be received. All right, that's what this thing means. All right, if you have a more powerful signal, you are the only ones going to be received. Okay? That is what they call a capture effect. 16, what is used to test linearity and output power? We've done this already. It's a single, it's a single, single tone, two tone, three tone. The correct answer there is two tone, which we mentioned earlier. And the one to the right is a, a two tone test generator that is pointing out 700 hertz and 1900 hertz. So a two tone sine wave test is the one that you use for linearity uh, testing of F SSB transceiver. Logic probe. Um, I don't know if you, many of you guys have done a digital uh, lab. Uh, a logic probe is used for uh, digital signals, okay? In other words, it's a pulse signal. It's used for detecting pulse. So when you're doing digital design or digital troubleshooting, you use a logic probe. Next is what does a spectrum analyzer display? Well, some of you might not have even seen this thing, okay? Here is a... Uh, uh, my um, spectrum analyzer at home is really a, a, it's a uh, uh, scalar network analyzer and it measures, okay, spectrum is always equivalent to frequency, synonymous to frequency. So when you're doing spectrum analyses, you are really doing frequency domain waveform, frequency versus amplitude. Okay, remember that because they will have a similar question regarding oscilloscope, which is a different um, uh, equipment. So spectrum analyzer, frequency domain. And to the right, to the bottom there is a uh, what we call a, uh, a high pass filter, which we I will show later on. Now, very important equipment. Why do we use dummy load? Okay, using a transceiver without a load or antenna can seriously damage it. It will damage, believe me. Transmitting into a dummy load does not cause interference. Okay, the reason being is because this is your antenna and it, it can only radiate uh, so far, right? Incorrect adjustment of a transmitter when connected to a mismatched antenna known to be a known load, all right? So the, the correct answer is all of the above. Uh, the bottom is an example of a 300 watt dummy load that you use to test antenna or your transmitter. If you want to homebrew one or make one, it's just a bunch of resistors uh, in parallel to, um, to make 50 ohms, okay? That is what a dummy load is. Now, what is frequency drift? Uh, it's not as much as a problem now because of uh, uh, the state of the art in electronics, okay? Frequency drift because unintended and arbitrary offset of an oscillator from its normal frequency. That is really the definition, A is the definition. It is caused by changes in temperature, voltage or changes in component values. Component do the rate in time, all right? In the parating, uh, that's, that is a uh, 50 ohm or, um, or a one microfarad capacitor is gonna be 100 microfarad, um, uh, microfarad capacitors uh, until the end of time, okay? They do the rate, and when they do the rate, they will drift, okay? So measured either in long-term or short-term period of time. 
So the correct answer there is all of the above. Okay, what is frequency tolerance? All right, again, uh, you're talking about uh, a measurement here. Uh, tolerance is initial deviation of any kind of oscillator, crystal or otherwise, compared to absolute reference of 25 degrees. So in the exam, all you have to do is look for a reference value of like 25 degrees, right? And a uh, um, initial deviation, that is the correct answer, right? Because it has to be reference to something. And the reference is 25 degrees centigrade. The next question is, which of the following is uh, considered in the 12 meter band? Well, I, I've been ham for so long that I don't even, I don't even need the, the, the frequency chart anymore. The correct answer there is 24.9. Okay, you, you, you guys were shown earlier a frequency chart and 24.9 is in the 12 meter band. You just have to memorize that. Which of the following is true concerning access to frequencies? All right, I've said that before. No one has, has priority to frequencies. Common courtesy should be a guide. That is the correct answer there. Gentleness agreement. How can the ground loop be avoided? Now, this is prevalent in a lot of um, radio stations here, amateur radio stations here. The reason being is they do not know how to connect ground. This is both RF and safety ground. As you can see from the top photo, all the equipment all right, are tied together in this uh, copper plate here. All right? And then from this copper plate, it goes up into a what we call a ground rod. Okay? So the technique there is to connect all contacts, all of those uh, equipment into a single point. Right, from many to single, right, in order to uh, uh, alleviate ground loops. But this is the worst way to do it. Connect all grounds to a single point. Which of the following can be the result of improperly adjusted speech processor? Again, if you do not do any uh, HF, you will never, never know this thing. Okay? But the correct answer there is, is because it's distorted speech, it, it will also do splatter and excessive background pickup, right? Because what happens is you have enough gain. So all of that gain translate into distortion, right? All, all three ABC is our forms of distortion. So the correct answer is D, all of the above. 26, which of the following components should be added to a capacitor to increase the capacitor? Um, um, one of our um, presenters, I showed you what that is. It's a capacitor in parallel. Which frequency is within the six meter band? Again, I've been a ham for so long. I could take, just take a look at all four and I can guess which one it is. It's 52.525 megahertz. That is the six meter band. Again, you just have to memorize that. There are so many questions like this in the exam, but you literally have to memorize it. 29, under which of the following circumstances are amateur station authorized to transmit? Again, we have to um, uh, word this correctly. Signal related to broadcasting, program production, or news gathering. But the, but the, the word here is this. Assuming no other means is available. Right? If there are other means, you cannot do this. Right? But if there are no other means, it's only allowed work communications directly related to immediate safety of human life or property is happening, okay? This is the only time you could do that. You could broadcast uh, uh, programming, production, and news gathering, all right? Assuming again, no other means is available. If you are told your amateur station is causing television interference, what should you do? All right, I took a look at this thing and immediately I knew that the, there was no correct answer. Okay, they said C was the correct answer. That is wrong, all right? Because if you take a look at the uh, drawings down below, 
you could see a transmitter radio is hooked directly to a low pass filter. Well, the answer is here, says here, connect a high pass filter to the transmitter. That is a no, no, never, never do that. You will, you will have more interference, right? So the correct answer really is to connect a uh, high pass filter to the input of the television. So television, high pass filter, and then the transmitter output uh, to a uh, low pass filter, all right? So if you take a look at this thing, the radio is connected to a low pass filter and the television is connected to the high pass filter. That is the correct way, right? So C there is, is, is the wrong answer. Okay, we need to talk to NTC and tell them to correct that. It's high pass to television, low pass to transmitter. That's the correct answer. How many hertz are there in the kilohertz? Well, a, a kilo is a thousand, so a uh, 1,000 hertz is one kilohertz. Approximately how long is the driven element by Yagi and then? When you think Yagi, always think dipole, all right? And so the correct answer there is because you are not uh, experienced in, in, in and antennas, you just have to know this thing that on a dipole it uses a half wavelength. Half wavelength, dipole, Yagi antenna, they all use half wavelength. So when it says approximately how long, it's half wavelength. Here's an example of a uh, to the left of the um, UHF uh, Yagi antenna in the vertical plane and an HF Yagi antenna on the horizontal plane. So driven element Yagi, half wavelength. What could happen to your transceiver if you replace its blown 5 amp fuse with a 30 amp fuse? Now you're going from a, a very, very um, low fuse of 5 amps to a 30 amps. What do you think happens if that thing happens? If you draw more than the required uh, 30 amps there, all right, you will actually destroy your radio, okay? Because your radio has been designed to blow at five amps or more, right? So what happens if your radio is coming up there at 10, 15, even 20 amps, right? What you're doing is, is really uh, trying to uh, overheat your components, right? And when that happens, fire could occur. So never, never put something higher than the required uh, amp capability of your power supply. It's five amps to replace it with five amps. How could you best keep an authorized person from using your amateur radio station? Again, this is safety and common sense. It's just here, the answer is here, bars. Use a key operated on and off source, just an on off source in your main power line. You, you, you have that anyway at your house. All right. So this is very easy uh, to, uh, to digest. What is the most important accessories? For a handheld radio in an emergency, okay. you now have a license. You got to buy yourself a, a handheld. Then is there's a real emergency, and you're supposed to go somewhere to uh, be the radio operator. Well, you better bring uh, you, uh, several sets of batteries, charge batteries. All right? Make sure your batteries are charged every time you go in an emergency. So several set of charged batteries. What's going to happen here is you you set your microphone gate. Anything that you set high could cause splatter or interference to other operating uh, stations near your frequency. So the only way you could do this and learn how to do this is to work with somebody else, maybe a couple of uh, 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 hundred kilometers away from you. And you tell them that you're speaking in a microphone and for the other station to tell you what is the best uh, adjustment on my microphone game. That's the only way you could you could learn how to do this. Most humans can hear sounds in what frequency range? Well, again, you, you just have to uh, learn that. It's 20 to 20,000 hertz. That is the audio range of our voice. Which of the following is a common cause of coaxial cable? Right. Common use of coaxial cable. Okay, if you have done any kind of uh, antenna 
or um, or putting together a, an antenna system, you must have worked with what we call a coaxial cable. What that does, it carries an RF signal between your radio and antenna. That's why it is called a transmission line. A coax is, is a carrier of uh, RF energy. Okay. Now, uh, which instrument is used to measure electrical current? Well, as this was talked about a little bit earlier, the correct answer there is hand meter. What could be used in place of regular speaker to help you copy signals in a noisy area? Well, the only logical answer there is the set of headphones. Right. Where should a mobile transceiver power negative connection be made? In other words, you're putting together a, a mobile rig, an equipment. So where is the best way to put a uh, the negative side of your plus or minus connection? Okay, the negative should be at the negative terminal of the battery or engine block ground strap. But there's a caveat on the engine block strap. Not all engine blocks are connected directly to the negative terminal of your battery. So if I were you, just remember always the negative terminal of the battery. Which of the following can be used to enter the operating frequency of a modern transceiver? There's only two answers there. There's two or keypad if you're using a computer or a VFO knob, which is your tuning knobs. Which of the following measures are commonly used in a multimeter? Right. I'm pretty sure most of you have used a, a, a multimeter. It's from, from what I can see here, there's voltage, AC, voltage DC, uh, resistance, diode. But since the answers in the question is voltage and resistance, that's what it is. So we talked about this already, uh, two-tone testing, non-harmonically related audio. Reason being is because from the picture, you could see one at 700 hertz, and the other one is at 1900 hertz. If you multiply the 700 by two, it's, it's, it's not gonna be an, 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 uh, uh, an odd number. All right? So it's non-harmonically related audio. Which of the following can be the result of incorrectly adjusted speech processor? Again, these are all distortion. So you will have distorted speech, splatter, and excessive background noise, all of the above. What brief statement is often used in place of CQ to indicate that you are listening on a repeater? The, on the Q&A, it says, says your call sign, but I added the word monitoring. So what if you say your call sign, and that doesn't mean anything. All right? But if you say you're monitoring, it tells the people that are listening that you are listening into the frequency. So the correct there answer should be say your call sign in the word monitoring, especially on repeaters. Here's another question that I don't really like. Which of the following is common practice during net operations to get immediate attention of the net control station when reporting an emergency? Right. Says repeat the word SOS three times by the call sign of the reporting station. Press the push to talk button three times. Begin your transmission with priority or emergency followed by your call sign. Play a pre-recorded emergency alert tone. Well, the NTC correct answer says begin your transmission with priority or emergency followed by call sign. But I have had priority and emergency traffic not being heard because they because they sila ng mga malakas na signal. So to me, it's always been and always will be break, break, break. That is always the universal one for um, getting immediate attention when reporting an emergency. But for now, just use begin your transmission with priority or emergency followed by your call sign. What is the formula for converting frequency to wavelength in meters? So I'm not going to repeat that. Which of the following describes the common meaning of the term repeater offset. Now, when you're doing handheld repeater operation, you will hear the word repeater offset. Okay, what is this is the difference between your repeaters transmit and receive frequencies. Magkaiba mga yan. Um, and the minimum that we use here in VHF is 600. 
plus or minus 600 kilohertz. Okay, the transmitter could be could be um, transmitting at one four four decimal three four zero, and then receiving at one four four decimal seven four zero. All right, so para hindi sila magkatog na pareho. So that's what they do. They offset the frequencies. Pero ba meron pang binibigay sa yung PL tone rin kung kung uh, private yung repeater they will give you a, a PL tone which we will which we will discuss uh, on a different uh, class license here. Which of the following types of solder is best for radio electronics use? I've always used Rosin Core solder. Right? I've been in this business for so long. Which of the items would be useful for a hidden transmitter? Huh? Okay, again, this is a uh, hobby within a hobby. Okay, we do a lot of transmitter hunt. I, I, I don't do it. <laughs> Pero ang kailangan mo dyan is an antenna na, na pwede mong ipukok. Right? It's a directional antenna. So you point in the direction you want and it sh you should be able to uh, uh, get a, uh, uh, a higher signal, a, a super uh, point it towards the source of the signal, all right? I said directional in one in one direction lang, okay? Sa likod, hindi masyado, all right? So pag meron kang directional antenna, those are the things good for hidden uh, uh, transmitter hot uh, system. What does an antenna trigger do? A lot of you will be using this thing, even in VHF. What does it matches the antenna system's impedance, right? To the transceiver's output impedance. In other words, it's a it's a dual port system. Okay, your antenna impedance is 50 ohms. Your transceiver output is 50 ohms. They shouldn't be more than um, uh, 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 several uh, ohms away from each other. All right. So if if it's malayo na yun do, you need an antenna tuner to bring it back to impede to uh, to the same impedance as the transceiver and the uh, antenna. So you need an antenna tuner to do that. Which of the following is commonly used for dual VFO? Again, if you're not using HF <clears throat> or a satellite, um, what the dual VFO does is permit the ease of monitoring the transmit and receive frequencies when they are not the same. Right? The, the, the reason why you do that is you don't want in one frequency. So Pati mo sa, sa ibang frequency, doon ka makikinig pa sa kanila. Ikaw mag-transmit sa, <coughs> sa frequency mo. What's the advantage of a digital voltmeter compared to an analog voltmeter? Again, the correct answer there is better precision for this new technology, digital technology, so we have better precision. What could be a symptom of ground loop? Yung pinagula pa na namin yung ground loop na naman. Ang pinakamalaki yan is, is the hum. Ang so, minagsabi sa iyo, meron kang hum. So pag nagtatransmit ka sa area, meron kang hum. Make sure, make sure you look for grounds, for ground loops. Right? Remember how you hide the ground together into one single uh, grounding, grounding rod? That's how it's supposed to be done. What does an S meter measure? Again, it measures the signal strength of any signal. Not the radio my S meter. Which of the following phone emissions you use the narrowest frequency bandwidth? Again, if you are not into ham radio, you will never know this answer here. But the correct answer there is a single sideband, because the bandwidth of single sideband is is 2.5 kilohertz. Double sideband is double that. Phase modulation and frequency modulation is even um, uh, longer than that. So single sideband, when it says no narrowest frequency, always staying single. Okay, here again, uh, this was already explained. Uh, the frequency for um, a halfway dipole for getting the total length is uh, 460 divided by the frequency, and you get the total length in feet. What is the logic probe? We already talked about that. Okay, now oscilloscope. Remember, we were talking about uh, a spectrum analyzer. Spectrum analyzer is used to measure the frequency domain, right? Frequency versus amplitude. 
Ang oscilloscope naman, it measures time domain. So time versus amplitude. So oscilloscope is time. Spectrum analyzer is frequency. What type of instruments can be used to accurately measure an hour field? Not many people know, uh, use this thing. It's called a calibrated field strike meter with a calibrated antenna. Right? It's, 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 a, uh, it's very accurate if it's calibrated. What is the purpose of a transmitter power supply interlock? Again, this is safety. It ensures that dangerous voltage are removed. If the cabinet where the power supply or the transmitter is at will be open or the, the, the voltage are removed. Okay. That's why it's called an interlock. What is normally meant by operating a transceiver in split mode, I kind of discussed that a little bit, is a transceiver set to a different transmit and receive frequency. <coughs> Which of the connector is commonly used for audio signals? There's a lot of connectors. As you can see uh, from the answer here, the PL259, which we use for coax, BNC is the same thing, for, mostly for a low frequency stuff. Uh, type end connector, mostly used for UHF and higher frequencies. The correct answer is RCA phono. It's the phono jack, like the, the back of your, uh, of your um, stereo uh, systems at home. Which of the HF antenna would be best for minimizing interference? If you take a look at the, the pictures, which one do you think would be the one suited for uh, minimizing interference? Uh, well, the one to the right is what we call a uh, um, dipole antenna radiation pattern. And uh, the one at the, at, the, at the middle is what we call an omnidirectional pattern. In other words, there are RF energy around 360 degrees versus figure eight here. Well, the correct answer there is a unidirectional antenna, which is this one right here. This is what we call a high gain Yagi antenna. It's unidirectional, it's only in one direction. Most of the radiation is forward, right? There's a few here in the side and hardly any at the rear. So they are used to uh, best minimize interference just by pointing that antenna away from the interfering station and you pretty much minimize the interference. <coughs> Which of the following can be determined with a field strength meter? Okay, what I showed you earlier, those three drawings there, is the radiation pattern of an antenna. You could use a field strength meter and keep measuring and plotting it until you plot the radiation pattern. So it's a field strength meter if, if you want to measure radiation pattern of an antenna. What are the typical characteristics and features of a coaxial cables used for antenna field lines and amateur station? There's only a few, and the correct one happens to be 50 and 75. 50 is mostly used here with, uh, uh, in amateur radio, and 75 is for your cable TV. <coughs> now, what does the term frequency stability over temperature means? Again, this is all about tolerances. Frequency stability over temperature is you're looking at a specific range measured in parts per million. So when they say frequency stability is frequency tolerance with respect to some range of frequency. What does the term selectivity mean? Okay, it really, really, this is a receiver specification. It is the ability of a receiver to distinguish between nearby signals and the desired one. In other words, the frequency at the center, frequency to the side, and several frequencies to the other side is trying to get, um, trying to get your attention, and you just want to discriminate. Um, of that one particular signal, okay? Your receiver's ability to selectively select which one you want is the term selectivity. The better the selectivity, the, the better it could uh, separate the, the, the unwanted signals. 
Another um, term is, is uh, or specification receiver sensitivity. Again, this is the measure of the receiver's ability to reproduce very weak signal. In other words, pag nakikinig ka, and then all of a sudden, zoom, big na sumulpot yung, 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 uh, yung signal. Mag ibis na, ang ibig sabihin ng maganda ang sensitivity ng receiver mo. Kasi it's ability to uh, pick the very, very weak signal. Okay? So yun, uh, yun ang definition ng uh, receiver sensitivity. What safety equipment should you always add to home-built equipment? Okay, what is, that is powered by 230 volts AC line. Of course, this is again common sense. And the correct answer there is a fuse or circuit breaker in series with the equipment. Always have your protection by using fuse or circuit breaker. What is the most important safety precaution? Again, no safety to take when putting up an antenna tower. So let's start there, insulate the base of the tower to avoid lightning strikes. For now, I'm gonna let that uh, answer go, but I, I, there are many other ways, right? That's not the best. But for now, that's the best answer there. So for safety precaution, when you're working with tower, you insulate the base. To avoid excessive human exposure to RF, Right? How should amateur antennas generally be mounted? You mount that away from accessible areas as possible. Okay, common sense again. So what you do is put it as far away from uh, on any accessible place. For the general public, they go in there and get RF burn. Again, Typical question that was answered earlier, uh, what are the frequency limit of two meter band in the ITU region three? We are region three here in the Philippines. And uh, uh, A there is the two meter band of the US, okay, region one. D is the two meter band limit of region three here in the Philippines. So we are only allowed 144 decimal zero zero to 146 decimal zero zero. Grid dip meter. What is a GDO? Not many people use this thing anymore because there are so many. There's the what we call the nano VNA now. Very inexpensive, fifty dollar test equipment that could do this and some more. Right. But during my time, we used it to uh, to resonate a particular circuit or tune the particular circuit, an LC circuit. If you take a look at the one to the the top top left, that's how you would do it. You either do it on on the side or on the, uh, near, near the, if, if this is a, the coil that has a hole in there, put the GDO as close as possible to that hole. That's how you would measure a, uh, an L LC circuit. And you will get a dip. That's why it's called a grid dip meter. Once it's in resonance, okay, the current, remember when you switch on the current, it goes to zero. That's, what, that, that's what's happening. Where do we use the frequency counter? As an example of a frequency counter, you measure that, to, used to you, uh, measure frequency of an RF oscillator or a transmitter or an audio oscillator, really any kind of an oscillator. And also uh, place lock and loop circuit, which is uh, on, uh, I guess, the class AXM. Okay, so the correct answer there is all of the above. What is intermod interference? This is, happens a lot here in the Philippines, because especially in the repeater frequency, because there's not much um, uh, attenuation on the filters. Right? What happens is if you have two signals, the one in the middle here, the, the, the two taller signal here, if this thing mixes, it produces harmonics, as you can see from the right side and the left side. Even though there are only a few dB below, pretty much interferian. All right, so that doesn't mean just because there are only a few dB below, you're fine. No, you're not. So inner mod is something that could cause um, unwanted frequencies by combining these this two frequencies on top here. Now, here's another one that's being used when you're on a repeater here. What is receiver descents? Okay, it's so an overloading of the receiver front end by a strong off-channel signal. 
for this is uh, <coughs> nagtra-transmitter sa 145 decimal 20. Pero ang katabi mo, 145 decimal 15. That's not far enough. Okay? If that signal is strong enough, it could desense your receiver that is 5 kilohertz away. So be careful. When, especially if you have a, a very uh, strong station and if you think uh, you should tune plus or minus 10 kc away and make sure there's nobody there. Because if you don't, if you don't, uh, you could desense the other guy's receiver or or yung repeater niya. What is cross modulation? We don't talk about this too much. Because when you talk about cross modulation, you talk about amplitude modulation. Nobody uses AM anymore except for aviation. So again, when you say cross modulation, always think of amplitude modulation. Somebody has talked about this already a lot, the open circuit, so I'm not going to um, uh, dwell on um, uh, question 81. But question 82, what term describes the process of combining an information signal with a radio signal is called modulation. If you take a look at the picture here, on the top is the information signal. Okay, this, is, this is your voice. You're talking. Then you need to insert a carrier here of a certain frequency. And when they mix, it's called an AM signal, the one here in the bottom. So the combining of information with a radio signal or really a carrier is called modulation. What is the meaning of your signal is full quieting? Again, when you're in the repeater operation, you always say, you don't, you know, you don't say you're five and nine okay, because there's no way you can see it. So you say full quieting, meaning your signal is strong enough to overcome all receiver noise. Sometimes there will be some noise but Malapi Shah, he has got a very strong, powerful uh, radio HD. He can open up the whole frequency all by himself. All right. So that is what we call full quieting, walang noise, walang background noise. Here's another one that happens all the time, even to me. What might cause erratic changes in the standing wave ratio reading? Meron kang SWR. it changes from 1 is to 1 to 3 is to 1. What happened? And most of the time, it's always a loose connection. Because when SWR changes like that, from, from 1 is to 1 or 1 or below 2 is to 1, it goes to 3 or 4 is to 1, there's something wrong. It's normally it's a loose connection on the coaxial line. Here, we've, just, we've already talked about that ammeters is normally used in series with the circuit so you can measure the current flow around the circuit. What, in general terms, is standing wave ratio? Again, it's, it's the matching of the load to the transmission line. All right? Always, the reference is always the source. And source more really, <coughs> excuse me, source more is your radio. Okay? It has a 50 ohm load. It goes to a transmission line of 50 ohms and then to an antenna that has a impedance of 50 ohms. Pag Lahat ng energy, lumabas antenna, meaning you do not have any kind of standing wave. Pag may bumalik, back to the source, there, there is some losses. Okay? So again, 1 is to 1 is what you want. And SWR measures how well a load is matched to a transmission line. What should you do if you receive a report that your station transmission is causing splutter? Again, those are distortion or interference. You need to check for off-frequency operation or spurious emissions. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a slide for this thing, but I, yung pinakita ko kanina with the, with the two signals, those are spurs on the, on, on, both on the left and the right side. Those are the spurious emissions. Sabihin on, they're not uh, attenuated enough that they could cause other, in, other forms of interference. And this is why it is. Where must a filter be installed to reduce harmonic emission? Always between the transmitter and the antenna. Filters always between the antenna and the transmitter, or between the transmitter and the antenna. What is the electrical components used to disconnect? We've, we've um, discussed that before, so switch, I'm not going to go through that. Which of the following may be useful in correcting a radio frequency 
interfering problem. Okay, a snap on fairway choke. I wish I had a picture of that. Uh, any kind of low or high pass filters, uh, a bad reject or bad pass filters will do, depending on your application. So the correct answer is all of the above. What popular operating activity involves contacting many person? Um, district one already said that earlier is called contesting. Which of the following is an advantage of a switch mode? Remember, there are two kinds of power supply, the switch mode and the linear mode. The, the biggest disadvantage of linear is malalaki mga transformer, mabibigat, mas, mas mahal. The switching transformers is because they utilize high frequency power oscillator, all right? And it uses a very, very small lightweight transformer. That's why they're a little bit more cheaper. But the only problem with that is they generate their own noise. Okay? So, metal plus, metal negative. What would the S, again, here's another SWR example. If the vertical or multiple antenna has an antenna feed import impedance of uh, 25 ohms and your coaxial cable is 50 ohm, what is the SWR? Well, it's just the, it's just your 50 divided by 25. It gives you two is to one, all right? What RF safety precaution, again, safety, should you take before beginning any repairs of an antenna? Again, you turn off that transmitter and discontinue the feed line. Para hindi ka masunod or masugatan. What is the best reason to use the headset? Again, it's for safety, hands-free operation, common sense. What is a device for use for radiating electromagnetic signal into the atmosphere, right? The answer there, of course, is an antenna. You need a source, you need a uh, transmission line, and you need an antenna. What is an electromagnetic device or electromagnetic Mechanical device, sorry, having one or more contacts and it's, uh, it uses uh, electromagnetic uh, coil. And the answer is the relay. What instrument is used to measure standing wave ratio? We already did that. If your mobile transceiver does not power up, what might be your first thing to check? Always check your source of power. Make sure that fuse is okay or blown before you start any troubleshooting. In what radio frequency range do two meter communication takes place? Again, you just need to memorize that. It's in the VHF range. UHF is 70 centimeters. MF, somebody said that already before, is the broadcast band. And HF is from 3 to 30 megahertz. What is the circuit block arc energy above and below certain limits? Okay. If you take a look at the drawings here, you'll see three waveforms here. Bottom and top are X top. And the only thing that's being passed here is in the middle. Right? Versus this one, the top is, is, is being taken away. It's only passing the bottom side. It's a low pass filter. Here, you're passing only the high side. So it's a high pass filter, but it asks you below and above or above and below. So this meets the criteria above and below. So it's a bad pass filter. Memorize this. Which of the following device would you need to conduct amateur radio communication using data? That's, that's a gimme, it's called a computer. Whether it's a, a, a Pi or Arduino or the regular PC. What is the coaxial cable? Here is what a coaxial cable looks like. It's a set, it has a set wire inside an insulating material right here, the plastic one, covered by a metal sleeve or shield. And this is what it looks like. A coaxial cable with PL259 connectors up, um, from end to end. And last but not least, what does a TR switch mean? It's a transmit receive change over switch if you are using a separate receiver and a transmitter. So that is it for now. I hope you uh, have any questions and uh, put it on um, the box. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Leo, for that really so, so detailed. And uh, I guess a lot of the participants will be able to 
comprehend much and uh, better understand the different questions and uh, enlightened on the answer, on the right answer. And sooner or later during their exam, when they're gonna take the exam, for sure they're gonna get perfect score. Okay, also um, right at this point, I wish to extend uh, our regards also and thanks for attending to Pastor Red Plaza from Phil Rad's uh, Red, and uh, likewise to the governor of ICEP Rizal Chapter. Wow. Engineer Lyle Anthony Joel Villas, thank you, sir, for attending. And nonetheless, also our, our sincerest thanks to our ever supportive, honorable Enrico Claro del Moro, the member of the board of ECE of the Professional Regulations Commission. Thank you, sir, for always supporting Rex, uh, RETS project. Now, also, hello there to all the participants from the Gulf countries. Thank you for attending. Uh, it's also a good collaboration that uh, we're extending your, you're extending your participation here in the Philippines. Thank you all to those uh, guys from the Gulf countries. So I'll now turn over to Mikey for the short Q&A and the rest will be provided as uh, we speak. And uh, of course, the reviewer will gonna collate this one and be able to share the participants to each and every participant in this webinar one. So please uh, await for some posters also and announcement as uh, there will be other webinar that will also help you uh, better understand the different uh, exam that's being provided by the National Telecommunication Commission. I'll now turn over you to Mikey. Thank you, DB1PPC. And now we head on to our Q&A. As you may have noticed, we already answered all your, uh, some of the questions. So you may refer to the answered tab. And now for the open questions, uh, most of the panelists will try to answer it and we will use to uh, answer it live. So first question. Um, I have, this is from Mike Contreras. So the question is, I have been gifted with a portable and mobile radio with antenna and I have no permit to purchase. How can I register this, this equipment after I get my license? Anyone from the panelists? How can he register his equipment after he gets his license? Well, I think I think it's one What do you call that? I bought mine in the U.S. Wala ako dalang. Uh, so I didn't know I was gonna buy it. So what I did immediately, pagdating na pagdating ko dito, the following day, I went to NTC Region Three, fill up the paperwork, uh, and uh, right there and then paid the fee, and that was it. Thank you, Sir Leo. Anyone for further answers? We shall proceed to the next question. The next question is, is there any other license for businesses using ham radio as their main communication? No. And it was stressed earlier that you cannot use it for business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next, for those who are asking uh, if this video will be uploaded, please be reminded that we will upload this video on our YouTube channel, rec.org.ph slash YouTube. So you may refer that and we will upload it uh, today. So next question. Um... How much is the exam fee for licensing? <laughs> uh, that was about a year ago. Uh, Fifty pesos. Fifty uh, pesos ang exam fee. Tapos may iatach ka na ID mo. Tapos yung uh, kasabado yung 
certificate from an NTC amateur radio club na pinagseminaran mo. So, may magtat- nagtatanong din kung valid itong uh, e-certificate na ating i-re-release. So, basically, ang REC at PARA and NTC has uh, memorandum of agreement na lahat na... So, kapag may memorandum of agreement, accredited radio club kami and at the same time, pwede kami mag-issue ng certificate to uh, apply for Class C examination. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, next, there are some people who would want to join our organization. So, is there any... Or the radio engineering circle? So, where, do sh- where should they go or what do what they need to do in order to join us for our president okay uh, siguro ano stand by muna sa announcement with our facebook page uh, we're we're still um inaayos pa natin yung ating application process uh, basically kasi ang radio engineering circle ay nabuo uh, from mga PUP <laughs> students yan talaga and uh, mga naging professionals na. So, uh, sa mga susunod na araw, i- i-open na namin ang membership ng REC sa lahat. Okay. Thank you. And for our next question, will there be any schedule of the licensing exam during this ECQ? May it be online? Or, or a proper schedule after the ECQ? Um, that's ano eh, uh, Mikey, uh, that's for NTCs and on, since they are the one in charge for the licensing and examination. So we're still waiting, pero as of this moment, no announcement for online exam. And also, yeah, um, exams are uh, postponed or ano, canceled muna. So uh-huh. let's wait for this is In addition to Engineer John uh, answer, uh, we're also collaborating with NTC on how do we also smoothen yeah, the ease for uh, face-to-face exam. Then uh, in lieu for that, we maybe NTC would be able to provide online exam um, as a support for this uh, pandemic that uh, is really happening now. It's quite... Uh, um, an opportunity also that uh, we have this webinar so at least somehow you'd ha- you, you'll have the time to review and then sooner or later once NTC will provide some sort of o- online exam then you'll be ready. Thank you. Mm. And some of the general questions or the repetitive questions in the Q&A box. Uh, can I use portable radio kahit wala pa pong license? Yes. You could put as, as big of an antenna as you want. As long as you do not transmit, you could listen. So, uh, yes, you can. Uh, another, can we use ham radios for our outfit unit in our school of Boy Scouts of the Philippines? See, District 1, nandiyan ba? Alam niya yan. Sir, Tito Lawrence? Uh, good afternoon. So, kumbaga sa ano eh, pag wala ka lisensya sa pagmamaneho, ganun din sa amateur radio. So, kung tatanungin natin ng batas, so, pag wala kang lisensya, di ka pwede mag-drive. Kaya lang, kung Sa school natin yung ginagamit, so tayo kasi hindi natin inihikayat na hindi tayo mag-license. So we're encouraging na magkaroon tayo lahat ng license. So kung for use of uh, ano lang naman yan, I think pwede naman. Kaya lang, eh, huwag naman pang habang buhay na wala tayong license. So magagamit naman natin to for uh, so, yan, like uh, Boy Scouts activity. So actually, marami na mga license uh, Boy Scouts in the Philippines. So, we're encouraging you to take the examination. Okay. Thank you, sir. Next question. 
I was given an Alinko ham radio by my brother and it has no official receipt. Can I still register it and get my license for it even without the receipt? I hope everyone receives it from the radio. <laughs> Well, again, based on my experience here in Region 3, I ko lang radio to uh, Region 3 and fill out the, uh, the necessary paperwork. And um, I, yun lang. Wala ko resibo. Thank you, sir. Next, what kind of brand of handheld radio do you recommend for beginners? May mga ano dyan, uh, pupunta ka sa Raon, there's two kinds, you know? the NTC approved ones and the non-NTC approved ones. Yung mga mura, of course, non-approved. Um, pero um, I would rather have you uh, um, buy the, just a little bit more expensive, but it uh, is approved uh, by the NTC. So uh, they, they run anywhere from 1400 to 1500 pesos. Okay. And for small organizations po, uh, do they need license in order to operate uh, or use handheld radios? Like church church organizations, you know, the typical UV Express people. Okay. And it's, it's, it's all being legal. Uh, if you use an amateur radio equipment for non-amateur radio use, that's illegal, all right? So uh, if you want to use this thing, you, you stay away from the amateur frequencies because n n n n it's being monitored now, all right? So you don't want to be uh, breaking the law. So for civic, for uh, organizational thing, stay away from handhelds like this, just for amateur radio use, okay? Mm -hmm. Madami naman ang bibiling po ng amateur use eh. Mas mura pa nga eh. But uh, stay away from um, uh, amateur radio use um, handheld only. Lalo kung wala kang lisensya. For the knowledge of everyone also, um, na-answer na po din itong question but for just for the knowledge of everyone, can we use Baofeng radio for monitoring? Yes. And why is it not type approved by NTC? Kung, kung monitoring lang, you can use anything you want. But once you start transmitting, that's a different story. Um, uh, I'll be honest with you, you know, I've seen people with uh, uh, uncertified Baofeng is using it on there. Pero pinakita ko sa kanila using my, spe my spectrum analyzer, what's the difference between a certified and non-certified one? So um, we are here not to propagate uh, unlicensed operation. So yun naman ka. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mikey, Mikey mad Madam Host, may I add to the question, answer to the question? This is yes, Ornan. Yes. yes, sir, Ornan. <laughs> Okay, uh, first and foremost, uh, if we just, if we will just abide by uh, uh, what the law says, okay, and it's been regulated, anything that is not regulated, okay, so kailangan tayo as uh, amateur radio license person, persons or even clubs, uh, we have to recommend and we have to patronize all type approved Okay, by the NTC and recognized by the NTC. Anything illegal is illegal and lawful. Okay, so uh, we as uh, para members, okay, club members, we have to monitor this because uh, we we have efforts to uh, take license, okay, be a license. Pero may mga, uh, I'm sorry to use the word, may mga bumabalas uba sa, or, sa, sa, sa batas na ito na dapat i-report natin. Okay, and uh, licensing. Okay, importante yan kasi regulated nga eh, itong amateur radio uh, clubs and uh, practices. So, uh, anything that's outside the law, uh, huwag natin ipatronize. Okay, and anything that you buy, 
make sure that the unit that you are buying has an NTC sticker. Kasi ibig sabihin, legal yan. Okay? So, anything that has no sticker, please don't patronize. Kasi pag nahuli kayo, kayo rin ang magsasuffer. Okay? Just like Mr. Leo Almasan mentioned, minomonitor ng NTC yan. Okay? And besides, anything that is outside the scope of amateur, illegal yan. Kasi kung gagamitin mo sa business, hindi pwede, di ba? So, I mean, uh, that's my uh, sense uh, input for this. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Orla. <laughs> so, I hope na clear na po yung sa Baofeng radios. And next question. Is there any standards po sa pag ng amateur station? Yeah, you just follow uh, as electrical standards, you know. You're, you're talking about high, uh, high um, uh, AC voltage here, normally 220. The only, uh, I have both 220 and 110 in the house. I have circuit breakers in, inside the house. I have uh, AC filters for high voltages inside the house. I have grounding inside the house, outside the house. So uh, there is a lot uh, on online how to put up a, uh, um, a standard uh, amateur radio station. And uh, in fact, there is a seminar, I don't think kung saan, pero, pero dito eh. Somebody's giving a seminar on grounding. And um, I, I, if I can find that, I will give it to you guys and you could, you could pro propagate that. Um, but again, the, the, the thing here is safety, right? And um, what kang, Lalo na yung, ano, yung isang saksaka mo, okay? I have four different lines here on four different circuit breakers. Each one of those circuit breakers is, is anywhere from 15 to 20 amps each. So, uh, madami akong radio dito. And uh, I also have a uh, 1.5 kilowatt amplifier. Um, has a separate 220 line. So, uh, if, if, if you want to uh, really um, know how to put one together, Email me. I'll give you my email address or, 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 or propagate my email address, and um, I will answer your questions in, in, in regards to uh, a proper uh, a ham radio station in the house. So, last question for everyone. This is the last question. Um, for Sir Leo, can we always rely on an antenna tuner to get the best standing wave radio, the SWR? The key here is you don't really need an antenna tuner. If you measure, if you um, make sure your antenna is correct, it's resonant on the frequency that you want. Right? You don't need, need an antenna tuner. All right? But if you do, then you may, you might as well have one because it's easy to If the SWR is very, very high and you try to connect that to your uh, radio, madaling masira. It's not gonna, it's not gonna kill itself right away, but unti unti masisira yan. I've seen that before, especially on, on Philippine Navy ships, right? Unti unti nasisira yung, yung radio nila because ang tataas ng SWR nila. So, as long as you follow the design, and um, and you tune it for the uh, lowest SWR of um, at least 1.7 to 1, wala kang problema. You will not need a tuner. Thank you, Sir Leo. Thank you to all our panelists. And now, for those of you asking about the e-certificate, we would just like to inform you that there is a webinar feedback form there's a link after this webinar that you can answer, not you can, you should answer in order for you to have the e-certificate. So you can reach us uh, via email through radio at rec.org.ph, Facebook page, uh, fb.me slash rec.org.ph, our YouTube channel, of course, rec.org.ph slash YouTube. And if you want to reach us uh, for membership and everything, uh, you, make it, you may contact us through that number, the 0915, uh, 0995 
No, 0951-439-2111. And yeah, I hope everyone had a good time listening. And of course, I hope na marami kayong na-learn today. And also for next week, we have another webinar series. This is for Class B examination. So, uh, slide please. So this one, our title will be the Amateur Radio Operating Procedures and Preparation to NTC Amateur Radio Class B Examination. So we only have 500 slots. So if you want to join, you can register now at webinar.reg.org.ph slash register. And of course, we will also provide e-certificates for those participants who will join this webinar. So thank you everyone. And again, uh, please uh, answer all the feedback form or the feedback form that will be given after this webinar. Thank you. Thank you.